Hello. Hi there, Paul. Thanks for having us. You're so welcome. I'm, that's a very cool walking stick. It's a wonderful walking stick. I'm so thankful for it. It's really, yeah. really great. It is. So, yeah, I'm about to embark on my uh, venture of doing this. So Good. I have uh, about four years ago, I bought 40 acres in Kingston. Uh-huh. And so it's got wetlands. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in the midst of trying to find out the where, but they're pretty spattered, uh, scattered around, which mm -hmm. I think is probably really good. Yeah, you got some good, good, you know, and again, the wood chips change it all. Yeah. It won't be wet. Yeah. You look at the rainforest, it gets 14 feet of annual rainwater. There's no, there's no bogs out there, there's no standing water. The wood chips evaporate it all. Yeah. It's amazing how it works. Well, it used to be all forested and then they logged it, uh -huh. like stripped mm -hmm. it out. But um, there is a section in the back, about a third of an acre, that they. Um, that was about three acres that they had to leave. Mm -hmm. It was really wetlands down there. Uh -huh. It has a nice, has a great topography to it. But, um, but anyway, yeah, I've been trying to figure this whole thing out, and so the wood chips. That's what I need to find. Well, out if you about. look in the forest, you never see a bog. Right. There's no standing water. Right. And everything's growing really well. I know. And dark, dark green. I, I mean, it's so obvious. This is an amazing cover. <laughs> it really, really works well. <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's not complicated. <laughs> well, it's the alders and alders have taken over like crazy. So I'm, mm -hmm. we're starting to take those mm -hmm. down and kind of clear that out. Well, that's what happens after they log. You see, nature's so amazing. You see, yeah. the alders come and build the soil. They're nitrogen fixers, and they build the soil for the upcoming conifers. Then, when the conifers get big, they all die off. But they built the soil. Oh. Interesting. And you see, they, every year they drop their leaves because yeah. they're deciduous, yeah. but they're putting nitrogen back and they build soil for conifers. Mm -hmm. And when they and they're, they're short lived, when the conifers get big and established, they're all dead, but they've built soil. Wow. And it's, it's no one no one does that. You, yeah. They clear cut, it just happens naturally. Yeah. It's, nature just totally gets it, knows how to yeah. maintain well, order. You know? Isn't that amazing? It <laughs> it's is. totally amazing. Yeah. yeah. This, you know, they tell you this is not intelligent design. Yeah. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> Everybody's out trying to reinvent a wheel that's already working perfectly. Yeah, and for you know, for centuries, you know, for it's not it's not a new idea yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was even considering getting a uh, wood chipper just because there's so much there, and my intent is to lease out garden space to organic gardeners. Oh, cool! And Wonderful. So I just. I've been saying this for two years, and I've been too busy doing other things, and I said, this is it. I'm preparing this year, and come spring, by hook or by crook, I'm going to find people that want to yeah, do it. Yeah, great. Well, I think it wouldn't, shouldn't be hard, because a lot of people don't have space, and, yeah. and I think more and more people are realizing, i got to grow good food, you know, yeah. because Seriously. the stuff in the store is not safe. So, I don't know, my my neighbor across the street has a uh, excavator, so uh -huh. we have that over there, and so he said, really need a top loader to make it efficient. He said a little side one will take you forever. Well, it did, uh, you know, uh, he's talking about a tub grinder, but they're, they're expensive. I and know. they're a lot of money. Yeah. yeah, I know there's people that come around and oh, do that for you. Maybe I get them in piles. A, a tree service, yeah. Hire tree service. Yeah. has got a chipper. Yeah. They just drive in, with their, drive in with their chipper and chip for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I don't, I don't have a chipper. I'm an arborist. Yeah. And I've been pruning trees for 50 years. I don't have a chipper. Because I discovered that it's really slow, they're expensive and, and a lot of money to maintain, yeah. and it's just not worth it. Really? I take all my all my brush to the landfill, they grind it up and sell it back to the public, you know. And I and I, I have tree servers bring me wood chips, but um, again, it's just they're it's very slow, one branch at a time, you know. And then you're breathing the exhaust, all that noise. It's just not a comfortable environment, you know. Well, that's why he said get the top loader because he the, said the, he's done that side loader yeah. thing. He said by the time it takes so long, spent a day, and he looked at me with that's it. I know it's it's you know and, and, and you know and buying it like a you know a hundred bucks a truckload is worth it when you consider the time Seriously, it took to, yeah. to make that you know so. But, but how do you monitor? They don't bring in stuff that's full of weeds and. Usually, usually branches. If there, if tree servers are doing trees and up in the air they're so you know. So that's enough branches. That's all I have. This is everything in my whole yard, but nothing but nothing but branches. So if I if we got it down and then I know. Well, look look at the forest. Right. What maintains it? Yeah. Needles, leaves, and twigs. Yeah. Well, that's what branches point. are made out of. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, again, if you just do the simple math, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. It's obvious. It's, yeah. it's not complicated. Well, I didn't know if too much bark would be a problem. Well, too much bark would be, but in, 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 when you chip branches, there's very, very little yeah. bark. Yeah. The majority is needles yeah. and leaves. Yeah. You don't want to use bark. You don't, and you don't want to use the main tree. You want to use the branches. That's the, gr the growing material. And these, the alders I have are probably under 10 feet. And the whole alder, man, because alder is the most amazing because it breaks down so quickly. It doesn't last long and it turns the soil like immediately. It's really, alders are the best. One of my favorite. I started burning and I thought, why am I burning this stuff? This is, yeah, this is a good usable material. Yeah. yeah, alders are really good. Well, then instead of doing that, maybe I know there's a guy somewhere by Bainbridge that he has a portable one he'll bring over. A tub grinder. Yeah. yeah tub so, yeah, just get a huge pile. You know, make make sure make sure you got a huge one because they go fast. Yeah, they yeah. don't they don't take long. Yeah. You know, and so make it worth your while. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. And just yeah, pull all those you know, pull everything in a huge pile for them. You know, and and uh, have them do it for you. I already bought the uh, excavator mm -hmm. from me, so it was cheaper than renting it. Yeah, you can move it. You can move a lot of stuff with the excavator. Yeah, that's great. So get that done. And yeah. And I'm working on buying the 17 acres next door too. So mm -hmm. I wanna create a great little community area and yeah. get cool. the kids out there and teach them how to grow food and then I want to put a commercial kitchen there and teach them how to cook it. Great. That's my... And intent. plant fruit trees, you know, because fruit is so good, you know, and, and, right. uh, and, uh, and the, see, the trees will feed you for generations. They're just, you know, they're, they're really they're a, amazing. They're really a great... Did you, you did the little bonsai thing. Well, I, I don't want to use a ladder. Oh, I can, look, 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 look at the top of my hand. That's where all my trees finish. I'm not using a ladder, and I can reach everything. It's so convenient. So you just bent the branches? No, the, the, way, the way the fruit does that. See, when I get to a tree that's this tall, I cut the branch going out. That becomes a leader. Let nothing go above it. As the branches grow out and they get fruit, they bend over with the weight of the fruit. The weight, the weight bends them down. This all happened naturally. I didn't, I didn't bend a thing. Well, I think it's so simple, and it's so easy. <laughs> it's not hard. And you put nasturtiums down below. Yeah, and, and um, they, you know, they're, they're really great in salads, the flowers. We eat them, you know, and um, they're just, you know, look. And here's what I love about, you know, what you're seeing here. You know, if you go to, if you go to science, agricultural science, they'll tell you wood chips type nitrogen make your soil acidic. Don't ever use them. That's their mentality. I want you to notice my nitrogen type. I mean, all their chemical fertilizers will never get anything that green. Yeah. And you're telling me I have a nitrogen type? I mean, it's, look at the forest, the nitrogen type, it's insanity what they're telling us because yeah, it makes no crazy. sense. There's no evidence. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Well, well, good to know. It's, uh, it's definitely inspiring. Well, the, you know, this orchard has been here for 42 years and I've never watered once. And we've had, we've had years of drought. And I love the wood chips. It just covers everything. It does everything for you. There's no, there's no work involved. <laughs> Micah, are you enjoying all your friends showing up today? All those good f friends. <laughs> Micah is an awesome dog. He's 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 so changed everything. The deer don't come and bother my place anymore. When the eagles want to get the get the chickens, he's on it. He's just phenomenal. He's a, such an amazing dog. Joe knows a guy with a great Pyrenees who is just so lovable. Yeah, yeah. A few days before he had killed a cougar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was attacking. Yeah, the they're 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 just they're phenomenal dogs. Yeah, someone gave this dog to us. We were really blessed. Oh yeah. Do you shave him in the summertime no. or anything? Well, you know, I, I keep coming back to nature. Yeah, I know. You know, again, we, we do all this stuff. You know, weeding, fertilizing, crop rotation, all these stupid things that are labor intensive shaving our dog. Shaving, that are not done in nature. And we keep thinking that we're smart. It's just like, you gotta be kidding me, you know? They know how, they know how to find shade. I mean, they're, 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 this is built in, they have brains. And they know, they, they have this coat, and this, they all, always have had this coat, and they know how to deal with it. They know how to deal with it. But I always used to give my boys a summer cut. <laughs> well, you know, cutting hair, if you, get, you know, it can be, yeah. it can be like um, in my way, you know, so it's just, yeah. it's a... Uh... <laughs> Thank goodness, that's okay. <laughs> I'll 
love these trees. Yeah, and, and uh, it's they just... They don't seem to be exactly espalier. They're not. So they're they're just... They're pruned, and you know, you, if, if you notice, the they're pruned really open. You never see fruit trees that open. You know why pruning trees open? This is, makes no sense agriculturally, but I'm trying to reduce the amount of fruit I get. Did you hear me? Oh. <laughs> if you walk along here and you look at all the fruit on there, it's mind-boggling. Yeah. It, it's totally scary how much fruit I get. I'm trying to get less, but it's not working. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> do, you, do you sell it? Or no, I have. I, I've got a big walk-in cooler, uh -huh. an eight by ten walk-in cooler. And I, I, I eat apples all year long. I feel so thankful. Yeah. And every oh, day, yeah. I, I have an apple in the morning. It's just, uh -huh. you know. And the thing that's really, really amazed me is just some, I, my, I've been here for 42 years. We've always grown our food, and when they were growing up, we used to eat a lot and go to restaurants. What's blowing my mind now is how little I eat. I'm not losing any weight and I have incredible energy. Mm -hmm. It's called nutrient density. It's really huge. I mean, I have an apple in the morning. I'm good the whole day. No lunch. And I'm working. And I'm not getting tired. Uh -huh. And I'm not losing weight. I go out here and I pick greens, you know, and I'm good for the day. Yeah. Because it's nutrient dense. And I'm really getting from experience like, wow, this is significant. This mm -hmm. really makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> And I, and I never get sick. You know, yeah, I haven't had a flu or a cold for 20, 25 years. Awesome. Because you, can, you, can't, you, you, know, you can't get sick when you have a good immune system. It, it really works well. The immune system is pretty powerful. And when it's supported, sickness can't happen. I've never been sick a day in my life. Ever. Ever. Okay, well, That's I guess it's 2.35. We can get started. I'm glad you all came. Thank you. You're, you're so welcome. And I hope this is a nice day for you. If you, if you have to use a restroom, if you just walk up, up the road around the house, come around the house, you look off to the left, you'll pass a little a wood fire oven, and there's a, there's a little building with a green roof, that's the restroom. If you need water, or you brought water, you should pour it out, and I have a drinking fountain over here. My water is really excellent. It's like, comes out of the glaciers over here in the Olympics. It's, it's 7.3 pH, it's really good water. And so uh, you walk into the water, and, um, and I really encourage questions. You know, as you're walking through, just if you have questions, ask. Now, how I came across this, I, I've, I was raised in Los Angeles, my parents grew all of our food, and so I've been gardening my whole life. At five years old, my dad had me up in the morning going out hauling chick, horse manure in our yard to hand spade. My brother and I wore out shovels, spading, you know, and we wore them out. They, they broke because the ground was so hard, you know. And so I've been, I've been you, know, for, you know, growing food and, and guarding my, my whole life. And, when I, and, I, uh, and I wanted that for my family, and when I got married, L.A. was not the same when I grew up. It got really congested. Property's really expensive and you can't get much. And I, and I says, you know, Carol, this is just not, not a future here for a family. We need to get a place where we can grow food. So I bought this place for the intent to grow food for my family. But I encountered a real challenge. We drilled a well, went 213 feet, and got half a gallon a minute. One half gallon a minute. And I'm, I'm building my house and says, God, I need help. How am I going to grow fruit without water? He says, come out to the woods and I'll show you. And I went out to the woods and I got on the ground and I started moving this cover. This is August. And I'm seeing the ground below is totally soft and damp and the roots are right there. And look at the trees bright green and that day changed my life. Totally changed. And I tell, you, tell people one of the greatest gifts I ever got was that lousy well because it opened me up to nature and the Creator, how He does things. And I feel so thankful. What a gift. Because I, I, had, I, had I had a good well up front, you wouldn't be here today because I can't till. And I've given up because I couldn't do it. And now, what I'm loving is that no matter what condition I'm in, I can hardly walk, but look at my place. It's awesome because it's not hard work. My only tool in the garden is a rake. It's so fun. <laughs> and you know, what's, what, what really, you know when, when, when your work is fun, it, it's, it's, you want to do it. It's, it. And when it's hard, it's, ah, oh, I have to go out there. You, this is so enjoyable. And then just... The, the density of nutrition is just such a blessing, you know, and just, I feel so thankful, you know. So I want to share with people that this is doable. It's not hard. And, and the bottom line is all about covering. This is, this is what's so significant to me. And if you look at nature, every living organism has a protective covering. You see those dogs, they have fur. We have skin. Birds have feathers. Fish have scales. And the soil is a living organism. And nowhere in nature where man has not been is it ever uncovered. Are you hearing me? Nowhere in nature is the soil ever uncovered until we show up. And when you take the cover off the soil, it dies and compacts immediately. And you know what's interesting how nature responds to us taking the cover off? What's the first thing that happens to your rototilled, you know, or plowed garden? 
it turns to weeds. Because nature's trying to put a cover back on. It's so obvious what's going on. Covering is essential. And you can't uncover. And nature's trying to overcome your stupidity and create weeds to create a new cover. Because it needs to be covered. I mean, it's so simple. And what I'm loving about this order, these are the pHs in my wood chips. 7.0, perfect center. And at center, everything grows there. I have in my herb garden over here, blueberries growing, a whole row of them. Right in front of it, I'm growing lavender, which is total alkaline, and, and blueberries are acid. But at 7.0, they're both happy because it's center. And what I'm loving about seeing nature, the creator's perfect. There's nothing, no missing, nothing missing. Everything's in perfect order. And what's hilarious, I have wasabi growing over here in front of my blueberries. Now wasabi only grows in nature in Japan in standing water in full shade. You know what I'm talking about? Wasabi. I have it growing in full sun with no water. And it's thriving. And then right next to it I grow sage to blow your mind. You know where sage grows in deserts with no water. But what I'm getting in the spirit is that in the wood chip cover, there's enough water for the wasabi if it wants it. But if the sage does it, it can move into open spaces and avoid it, but they can choose. And that's what really amazes me. This design is so perfect, it covers all the bases and the plant can choose whatever they want. It's so amazing. And we work so hard to try to adjust this pH, to try to adjust this water for that, and do all this stuff that never lasts. Well, we don't need to, because it's just, it's so simple and so perfectly designed. Well, where do you get your wood chips? I get my wood chips from local tree services. Okay. This film, Back to Eden film, has changed the whole lifestyle of tree services. Mm -hmm. In the past, tree services used to have to pay to dump their chips. Mm -hmm. Now, they're in demand and they're selling them. <laughs> I'm telling you, all over the all over the United States, there's things called chip drop. You can you know, on the internet and oh, and, yes, and, yes. and and tree service. You can contact them and they'll, and they'll bring you wood chips. We use them. It's it's hilarious. I mean, I love it. And you know, the beauty of wood chips is that trees grow. It's a, it's an unlimited resource. It's never going to end. It's just it's. Well, we had a guy that cut down some trees, and I called him after I saw the documentary. I said, John. Could you stop by a load of chips and how much? And he said, oh, I'll just stop one by. And he backed on in and yeah. dumped one like the well, day after or something. Yeah. You know, and, and for them, it's so nice to have places to dump. You know, I have a place to swim, you know, an acre and a quarter. And these tree services in town, you know, they can come there anytime, day or night, just dump and drive off. You know, it's convenient. No, no, no charge, you know. And, and, uh, oh, sure. But, but now they're finding that they're valuable and they're, they're actually charging for them, you know, and, uh, <laughs> which is. $100 a load is what they're, pay, what they're charging here. But if you ran a chipper and filled that truck, 100 bucks is a bargain. It would take you a day or more. I mean, it's a lot of work, you know, feeding a chipper. With you. So it, it, it's, you know, and again, to me, this is, this is such an asset. This is such an incredible investment in my property. You know, I, I, don't, I don't even think you can put a dollar figure on just the nutrient value and just, you know, what I'm getting out of this is just phenomenal, you know, and it's just... How thick do you put, well, do you put um, chips down every year? Here's, I love this question. You see, when I first came, my soil was really deficient and the chips broke down really quick. I thought, wow, man, what happened, you know? But what I'm finding now, after 42 years, my soil is so nutrient dense, these chips aren't breaking down at all because the soil is not hungry. Mm. I just, nature is amazing. And this is what I'm so loving about how the Creator designed this. You see, if you follow the natural order correctly and you do the work up front, as you get older, you get a higher and higher return with less and less work, mm -hmm. which is how it should be because you have less energy. And here's what's so pathetic about American agriculture. These farmers today that are doing agriculture in America that spend big money for education, their reality is they're spending more and more each year to produce less and less. That's their reality. They're spending more to get less. It's pathetic. It's totally pathetic. And you're looking at my future like this is what I'm looking forward to? Spending more to get less? It's so scary and it's so pathetic because they don't get it. You can't rob the soil and put nothing back. And chemicals aren't, aren't, aren't real. They're synthetic. Here's the thing that really amazed me as you look at human history. We have recorded human history for about 6,000 years recorded. 
no culture anywhere in the world for 6,000 years has ever used salad dressing. <laughs> Think about that. Until 1948, when they started creating chemical fertilizers. And the salad started tasting bad. Didn't have the flavor. Mm -hmm. So they made salad dressing to mask the funky flavor of the salad. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, wait a minute, what changed? How come the salad doesn't taste good? And go back to the original and just use good organic material to feed the soil. And we've been, been buying that garbage and, and living on that totally deficient stuff for decades and don't get it. You know, it's just, it's so simple, man, how obvious it is. And it's just, <sighs> while you're here, you see that, that cherry tree out there at the, at the end, little cherry tree? Underneath is strawberries. Ah. Go over there and sample them. Because while you're here, I want you as much as possible to taste my food. Because I want you to really experience what real food tastes like. Because mm -hmm. it's different than you've had, I, I guarantee you. So go, go, get, go over there and get some strawberries. <laughs> Uh -huh. I saw your film and I put down some, um, the paper and everything and did the witches. Uh -huh. um, it's spring. It wasn't until spring that I got it done. Is it going to take a while? For it, it, does it does take time. And, and, but here's the beauty of, of how it works. See, the, the creator designed this. See, as that material lays the ground in compost, every time water goes through it, it creates compost tea that feeds the soil below. Uh -huh. And so your soil will be in a constant state of upgrade forever. Right. That's the beauty. So it's been deficient because it hasn't had a cover, so it's gonna, gonna take a while. Uh -huh. When I first came here, my trees had every disease on the planet. I had leaf curl, I had powdery mildew, I had scab, and I didn't have fruit for four to six years. Okay. Now when I plant a tree, I had none of those issues in the first year it bears 30 apples. Did you hear me? Wow. First year it bears 30 apples. Because my soil changed. It's now nutrient dense. Well, so, I planted a little bear root. Uh huh. And it, I picked 50 apples off of it. They told me to pick all the fruit off mm -hmm. this year and let the roots grow. Uh huh, yeah. But I picked 50 apples mm -hmm. off of it. Cool. Well, then that's good. I already had the witches down at that point. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just saying it, it does take time, but it's totally an upgrade. Every year is going to get better. That's what I'm so loving about this. Every year I go back, oh, my produce is bigger and sweeter. I, I'll just give you an example. I, I, you know, arugula, the, the, the green, they're very small. I had arugula in my, in my garden two years ago, I'm not exaggerating, with leaves one foot long, three inches wide. <sighs> I, I'm flipping out, man. I've never seen this before. So I asked the creator, you know what he told me? It was so cool. He says, this is not going to end. And I just started busting up. This is awesome. This is incredible. It's not going to end. It's just going to keep getting bigger and better because that's the nature of you know multiplication. Just more goes in, more comes out. So, Paul, if you have oh, 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 okay. go ahead. Okay, if you have established fruit trees, what should you do to uh, cover the ground all around them and go wide with wood chips? With wood chips. Oh, and okay. don't believe the lie they tell you the roots go as far as a drip line. Did you hear me? No. Oh. That is a lie. I have a 11 year old dwarf plum in my, in my orchard here. They have root shoots coming out 35 foot radius, not diameter, 35 from the feet from the trunk, they're coming up. And it's a dwarf tree that shouldn't have roots. Right. And what I'm finding is that when you create an environment like this, they're not going to be dwarf. Okay. The reason why trees don't go out very far because the ground's compacted and hard and they can't. But when you have aerated loose soil, they're going to grow. So, uh, so much of what we're told are total lies because they're, they're, they're coming from a broken premise and never seen something in a healthy environment work. Okay, so you don't need to put newspaper down or anything? If you put wood chips eight inches or more, nothing comes through. Okay. You kill everything. And you see the grass and weeds are an asset. Don't take them out. Just bury them and let them compost. Mm -hmm. Here's, I mean, it's so pathetic how hard we work to fail. I mean, all that green material is really good life force. Why are we taking it out? Just cover it, let, let it compost and feed the soil. <laughs> yes? Well, what about like apple mix <laughs> and such? Well, you, you don't have any. Here's what I'm finding, uh -huh. and, and you, you can relate to this in your health. Mm -hmm. When you're in good health, you don't get sick. No right. bug bothers you. The same is right. true in nature. See, mm -hmm. bugs and insects only go after dehydrated, stress unhealthy plants. Mm -hmm. And the design of the creator who made them was for the purpose of maintaining a healthy environment. You see, if unhealthy plants could produce seed and keep growing, they'd eventually get extinct. 
weaker and weaker and weaker. So insects maintain a healthy environment by removing unhealthy plants. It's intentional. So when a bug shows up, you don't kill the bug. You get your tree well. Mm -hmm. right. See, we do it all backwards. Mm -hmm. The insect's not the problem. Your lack of health is. And it's just the same with allopathic medicine. You know, I'm sick because I have a, a dysfunctional this, this immune system. I'm not, I'm not drug deficient. I've never been drug deficient. I never will be. I need to correct my immune system. And so the whole mentality of allopathic medicine and agriculture is so backwards and stupid because it's not addressing the real problem. So health is, is amazing. I had the most interesting experience that really validated that. I had, um, I was growing celery in my garden. And, you know, celery, the seeds are really tiny. You were, you know, and it's really hard to get them properly spaced. You drop one three fall because it's just impossible to get them, you know. So I'm thinning. And I got these really nice looking plants. I said, you know what? I'm going to go take these over to my herb garden and add more because these are nice plants. I'm going to just transplant them. So I moved them over to my herb garden. Uh, in my herb garden, I've never seen a slug. They don't go there. But the next day after I planted those celery, it was full of slugs eating the celery. Oh. And I says, God, what's up with this? He says, just watch. He always comes back with just watch. I said, okay. I come back the second day and all the foliage is off the, off the celery. It's down in the stumps. I said, you're going to tell me to keep watching? There's nothing to watch. No, you just keep watching. You'll see. I come back the third day and the slugs have all left. And the celery grew back fine. And here's what he told me. He says, do you notice in your garden the slugs never touch your celery? But as soon as you moved it, it put out a signal. I'm stressed. I'm dying. Take me out. And all of nature heard it and came and cooperated. On the third day when that signal stopped and they recovered, they all left. And I got that day that everything in nature is so connected to one another, so in communication with one another, it's phenomenal. It's only humans that aren't connected. Everything in nature totally gets it, knows how to operate, you know. And so I'm learning instead of trying to fight nature, to pay attention to it and cooperate with it and work with it because it's really effective and really good. And it's way better than I am. And I need to learn from it, you know. <laughs> Not try to overrule it, you know, and, and control it because I am the learner. This has been happening for 6,000 years. I'm a new guy in the block. <laughs> I'm, I'm new at this, so I need to learn, you know, so I'm, and, I'm, and I want to learn. Wow. You go to tell the chips in. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. The reason why they tell you wood chips type nitrogen, nitrogen and um, make the soil acidic is because man can't leave it alone. They till it in. If you notice in nature, nothing is ever, just, the soil is never disturbed, never tilled. Everything is laid on top all through nature. And see, when you till stuff in, into the soil, the soil has to digest and break it down. And in doing so, it ties up all the nitrogen. It stresses the soil out because it's got to break it down. It's got to digest it. When you lay it on top and it breaks down on its own and it feeds the soil, there's no stress. There's no problem. But when you till it in, I, I, I never, I, I used to get these incredible loads of really good chicken manure and stuff, bring my garden and I till in and all my vegetables are yellow. I'm thinking, what's up with this? Well, I tilled it in, and the soil was stressed. It was, so, I, it was so pathetic. I had this orchard working really great for 17 years. I'm tilling my garden like an idiot. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. I, didn't, I was so con convinced of what I was taught. I didn't get it. And what, and what changed it was one day I'm out there in the spring planting, planting my um, garden. I, I run the string out there, and I put the stick in the ground. And I hit this hard pan like in six inches, like <laughs> dead stop. I says, God, how come my, my hard pan's not breaking up? And he says, he says, go out in your orchard and weed. I'm not going to talk to you. He says, what? Just go, go weed. So I got my orchard and I got this thought, why don't you start moving these wood chips? I said, and I'm down to my elbow in this total black compost. I'm thinking like, I got screaming. I was, something wrong with this picture. I did nothing here. Look what I got. I've been killing myself there and I got nothing. And, he's, and I said, and he says, well, it works in the garden the same way. He didn't ask. I was so mad. I threw that pillar away and started covering my garden with wood chips. But it took 17 years before I got it. <laughs> it was pathetic. <laughs> How long do you have to uh, compost the, the wood chips before you spread it on your oh, garden? Again, now, th your question is really great, and I want to use that to, to help you all. Whenever you have a question, go to nature and watch what it does, and you'll find the answers. What, is, what happens in nature? Every fall, the needles and fall on the ground fresh. No one moves them, and they feed the soil. It's perfect. What, when, whatever state you get the wood chips, it's usable if you lay on top of the ground. It doesn't matter how old or young, mm -hmm. because they're going to break down. Okay. And on top of the ground, they're not going to have any negative impact on what's below. And, by the, and here's what I think is so interesting about, remember they tell you in school, there's certain things you can't use, like cedar, 
So can't use cedar or pine because you know they'll, they'll kill your soil. Mm -hmm. Cedar has tannic acid. Mm -hmm. If you look at my forest over here, you see a lot of cedar trees, the smaller ones, and you see the big, big green fir trees. During the summer when it gets it gets really hot, those cedar trees flag. The interior turns turn, turn brown, and all of a sudden falls on the ground. No one rakes it up. Look how green everything is. And here's my sense: when that stuff falls on the ground with tannic acid, by the time it goes through the composting process, when it gets to the roots. Tannic acid is not there anymore. The compost, compost process has changed it. And I'm seeing in, in, my, in my mind that the creator who designed the system didn't miss anything. He didn't miss anything. He's got it all figured out. And the design in nature is perfect. It doesn't need any help. And it works really well all by itself. And when I try to help it, I mess it up big time because it's way ahead of me. So you can just have that confidence. Just put the stuff on the ground and just leave it alone because it will take care of itself. <laughs> It doesn't need you. <laughs> if you try to help it, you're going to mess it up. <laughs> I just got 10 yards of wood chips not that long ago, and I didn't get to it immediately. Um, and I wish I had, because of course it starts composting right there in the pile. It started composting really fast. It was a, a lot of tree stuff, so there's a lot of green in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up having to do it with a mask because of there was so much mold in it. So yeah, isn't it amazing? Out quicker is better. <laughs> And you see all, all these molds and fungus and, and, and bacteria. This is, this, is, this is what I love about wood chips over like manures or grass clippings or leaves. Wood chips has fungi. Mm -hmm. Fungi is the most potent life force in the soil. Mm -hmm. Just for example, one of them called mycelium. In the soil will spread for miles. We're not talking feet, yards. We're talking miles living mycelium. And when plant roots attach to that mycelium, they access the life force that spread out for miles. I mean, it's huge. It's totally like there's no other material comparable to which is as far as I'm concerned for building soil. It's just, yes. Well, I was reading a scientific article about mycelium uh -huh, yeah. and fungi and stuff. And they were talking about uh, people that till their soil. And they, they were saying, don't do it, you know, just because the mycelium form this network, you know, yeah. and, and they feed, they, they basically talk to your trees and talk to your plants and stuff like that. Here, here's, again, what he's saying is that you have a, you have a living organ, thousands of living organisms in the soil who all have their homes, have their babies there, and, have, and this is their life, this is their whole community. And when you till, you kill them all. Yeah. It's total, mm -hmm. de total destruction of an incredible life-giving community. It's insanity when you really think about it. I mean, can you can you do more damage? Can you make it worse? You know, it's like it's crazy. <laughs> highway, yeah, it is around. incredibly. You know, and that, that's what I love about it. Again, this is this is designed by the by the creator. It's just phenomenal. And you know what I so love about it is, wood chips cannot be compacted. <coughs> Did you hear me? Yeah. You see all this traffic that goes across here. Wherever you are, just bend over and start moving the wood chips. Watch how easy they move. And the soil, and you see, and you, when you walk on it, you feel it bounces. That's why I'm so, I'm so, when I till my garden, I'm, don't walk on it, and you water, walk on it, it compacts immediately. Mm -hmm. This stuff here never compacts, which maintains oxygen. Mm -hmm. What's the first ingredient to life? Mm -hmm. Oxygen. It's so, so obvious. This is full of oxygen because it can be, it can't be compacted. You know, it's like, it's so awesome. When you start paying attention and getting it, it just blesses you because it's so well done. <laughs> There's a great documentary called The Fantastic Fungi uh -huh. by, uh, I think it's Paul, I forget, he's I've over in Olympia. Mm -hmm. Wow, that like is an amazing. Yeah, it just, it's just, exactly it's, what you're talking it's about. incredible, you know, and, and to me it's just like, why don't we access this? What are we up? Why are we fighting it? Right. Opposing it, man. It's so, such an incredible resource. Right. <laughs> I'd just like to say it gives me hope that if enough people just do their little yard yeah. that way, that uh, the earth has a better chance. Yeah, well, he'll, you know, after World War, you know, World War II, they were rationing things. Everybody had victory gardens because they had to, yeah. you know. And I'm thinking, I'm hoping that as they see what's happening to the world and, and health, People are going to start waking up, and, and this film, uh, uh, this film blew up. Three years ago, I, it, I was told it had over 50 million views. Mm. It's gone all over the world, mm. you know, and, and people are getting it because it works. It's you know, not, I'm, not, I'm selling anything. We're just telling it, you know. And it was so. I got there was a lady in in Israel, in in, um, in Sinai, 
and she saw the film, and she's 65 years old, and she said, man, this is incredible, you know? And so uh, she, she ordered two 55-yard trucks of wood chips, 55 yards, 110 yards, and she spread them by herself over her yard. And she called my wife, she says, Carol, this is incredible. People are coming from all over the country because in Galilee, where I live, everything is brown, but in my place, it's all green. And they're asking me, how are you doing this? <laughs> they're blown away. Like, how is it green here? Well, the wood chips hold water. I mean, it's just, it's totally awesome. <laughs> so I'm really thankful that it's really getting out there. It's, it is spreading, you know, and, and um, again, it works. It, um, it's, it's not something that's going to be challenged or fail because it, it works. It's functional. And so just, just we have to get the word out. People have to start doing it. I think the more it's done, you know, this is why I'm doing tours. You, when you leave this place, you're going to feel confident. I can do that. This is doable. Like, he's doing it. He can't even walk, you know. And, and uh, so, yeah, really, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> What what is so cool about this is that over time, as your soil keeps improving, you have to use less and less and less. This is what I'm so loving about it. I, when I first came, they were breaking down so quickly because the soil was hungry. But now it's just when I get around to it, it's okay. If I don't, it's still okay. It's so. I well in, in my in my garden system, I'm using screen wood chips, and uh, I I cover half of it every two years. Every other year, I, I put a cover on, you know, and I'm just putting like, you know, uh, an inch and a half, two inches, not much. Oh, just, you only have to do four inches the one time? What, what, what I, it's just, it's just, again, everything is composting, breaks down, so I'm just supporting it, maintaining it, you know. What about in the orchard? In the orchard? Mm -hmm. Well, it's amazing how long it's been since I put anything in here. It's been a long time. Yeah. Well, we've done it recently. What we do now, I, honestly, in the orchard is... Uh -huh nice thin top coat for weed prevention because it will compose, decompose, and expose the weeds again. So right. we restore the covering. Um, but honestly, this was put on this last year. Um, but honestly, I only put... Not much. Yeah, like last year. Oh. Before that, it yeah, was we had a like 20 years, years or something. Well, it's been, it's been well, oh, I, I did this 40, 42 years ago was the first initial and, and then I, I really I had access to a lot of wood chips and I, I put the stuff 16 inches deep around all my trees it was awesome and that last 16 wow. it's like I it's like I raised the floor man it's like a, it was like a platform it was in, and it took a while for that to break down but it was really cool that was a, a really a great resource you know and he's right you know we raised the floor so much the way he's pruned these, tr these trees we started getting to the point where we couldn't I couldn't keep adding so much because it was just going to be on the ground right so right. I think that's one of the motivators to keep it so thin too yeah see my many of my many of my tree branches are laying right on the ground mm. you know because the, the weight of the fruit just keeps pulling them down so the fungus doesn't affect the fruit because I know, like, no, it's I, totally. I come from Wenatchee, where if the if the apple hits the ground, you can't use it because a fungus that lives in the dirt gets on it. That's because it's dirt. Instead of it's not wood chips. Wood chips. Yeah, <laughs> and the reason why you have and and the reason why you have fungus is because it's all chemically fertilized. They use tons of spray. That's the most toxic environment on the planet. Is what they're growing tree, fruit in over there. Oh. I had a young guy come here on, on an orchard. He was nine years old. And he says, I'm allergic to apples. I can't eat apples. He says, no, you're not. You're allergic to all the pesticides and sprays they're using, not the apple. Mm -hmm. He says, why are you hearing all, all the apples? You, want? Well, you don't understand. I, swear. I says, I hear you. It's not you. It's the apple. So these people are eating my Connie apples. Says, I can't believe the aroma. The fl this is so, so the kid just couldn't take more. So he took an apple and started eating it. He started yelling, I'm not reacting. I'm allergic to apples. I says, no, I told you you weren't. Mm -hmm. Nothing's wrong with you. It's the apple that's wrong. And your body is re reacting to all the poisons. Yeah, I had a woman come next week from, from Upper State New York, same thing, I'm allergic to apples. She ate three, three apples back to back with no reaction because she's not allergic. The apples are fine. The stuff in the store isn't. So then if you're starting the garden from dirt, what, what is your first amount that, I mean... If, you, uh, uh, if you're going to do a garden, because initially you have to access the soil to plant your seeds in. Right. So four to six inches because you got to pull back to, to access the soil. And then as your plants grow up, then you move the witches back to cover the ground around them and you're fine. Okay. Paul, are you still using chicken manure or anything on your garden? No. I, I have a, I have a, I have, I have my chickens, they, they create compost and I, I spread it out, but, but I'm just using witches now. Oh, you are? Yeah. The small... I screen them. Screen. You'll, you'll see when we get to the garden over okay. here. That's, it's all it's all really black stuff because I sweet here's the, here's something as you get older you guys can relate to this you start looking at looking looking at oh I'm just, I'm just being real I, I've known these guys for like how old's your daughter uh, 
31. Okay, I remember she came. My, 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 32 years. 30, yeah, and she, my wife delivered that baby here. Wow. And so I remember her coming. So we've known them for decades. Before my babies. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and you guys, you know, you've seen my property. You've seen the, oh, yeah. the conditions in that. You know what's happened here. Yes. You know, so they, 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 they've seen this in history here. But um, well, well, I'm trying to get back to your question now. Uh, chicken, chicken, yeah. Filtered. Here's here's the thing that was interesting about um, the, the screen. You see, when I screen material, I have really fine stuff, so I don't I don't have to pull yeah. it back. I can plant it directly in it, right. and it's so convenient. It's make a, 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 a groove my rake, and, I, and so it's just as you get older, you keep making things easier for yourself. And so I just screen it and put the heavy stuff out in the orchard, or I, I go to, go to a place that already has a screen and just, and just buy so that. When you yeah, you've gotten a pile, and you screen that as you. Well, I get I'll, I'll get my truck, you know, and I'll I'll have a, a, basically you know a, a product called um, hardware cloth, yeah. and 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 you get it comes thirty <laughs> inches, so you get a thirty inch piece, put a wood frame, put it in a wheelbarrow, throw your wood, and screen, and the and the, and the stuff in the wheelbarrow all screen is stuff out in your garden. Well, that's what you used to do with the the chicken yard, yeah. but now you're doing now it now the now they've got. Over at Cascade, they got these huge machines and screens, you know. So I can I can get a you know a yard for thirty bucks. So it's just so much easier. Just load oh, my yeah. load my truck and just drive. yeah, drive in and load it, <laughs> unload it, and they have Nick help me unload it. So it's just you know, again, as you get older, I know. you you just start using convenience, you know, and uh, and it's just so nice, you know. It's just and you'll see the stuff in my garden, honey. And again, it's just so beautiful. All I do is just take a rake and make a little groove in that stuff and plant oh, yeah, plant seeds, and it's just it's just it makes it so so much easier, you know. And then have to pull all back and move it, you know, and so it's just... So after a year or two, you can plant right in the top? Well, that compost and stuff, you can plant to it immediately. Mm-hmm. Because it's broken down. Yeah. So we have, we have really thick, or, you know, big... Could we put the screen stuff on top yeah. of that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and do And you're good. Way? Yeah. Because it's, it's probably that deep. It's no problem. Yeah, put that on top as planting it, and the roots will go right down and all that good stuff and be fine. Great thing. The reason why too is like the screen chicken stuff. Yeah. We're getting a lot of seeds. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we're That's planting a bunch of weeds. Yeah. But what's great about this screen stuff he buys is it's tub ground. It sits for a while. It's aged. Yeah. It's yeah. aged. No more seeds, and it's, it's not drawing so much nitrogen. And it's you know, you know why it's black? Because in those piles it got really hot. Okay. Really hot, and so that heat killed everything. So right. you're not composting here. No. I mean, I throw all my yard waste to the chickens, and they compost it there, and right, I take right, it. Right. I, I, I got to take it out because my fence is getting too low, you know. <laughs> but um, otherwise, I just, I just get that good compost and wood chips because it's just the best. And if you did want to make chicken pen stuff, you could pile it and let that decompose. Yeah, right. So that you won't have the weed issues. Mm-hmm. Okay, but you do put. You can just like I put down the stuff this spring. So when would I use for, when would I use compost? I put down the wood chips this spring. Oh, just whatever you put, whatever you want to use in your garden, you put on top. Just lay, lay, put over the wood chips. Okay, so if I want. If you look in nature again, what I was saying, nature all it does is layer. Right. You think about that. It's never mixed. Mm-hmm. It's never dug in. It's just layered. And we keep thinking we got to do something. We got to mix it. We got to dig it in. And it's like it's so crazy. You know, how how we just work so hard to fail. So if you put fertilizer on, it'll work its own way down. Yeah, every, gravity it works. Really matter. Gravity works. Yeah. It, it's totally effective. It, everything goes down. <laughs> I'm just looking for the starter parts, though. Like, I, cause, so this year I pushed everything back and planted in the, in Dirt. the soil. Good, yeah. And yeah, so as the plants... Not, it, they're not doing that well. Well, because your soil's not good. You know, but as they start growing, if you move the bushes around in water, you'll see you'll see the plants will improve. I'm, so, I'm hoping to see that. You, well, you will because you see that's just breaking down, mm-hmm. and the water going through creates, creates compost tea. See what people don't realize is uh, plants are only taking in water; they don't eat they don't eat soil. Mm-hmm. All they take in is water. So as your wa- your water is nutrient dense with compost tea, that's what they're eating. Mm-hmm. So you want to create an environment where you, where your watering is f- loaded with nutrients. So you can't just push the wood chips back over though. You have to you have to give them room to start and then Yeah, because see roots you see roots chips are not a growing medium. They're a support to the soil. Right. So roots have to be in soil. They need to get their into the soil. Once they're in the soil then the wood chips will feed that soil. Right. And but I gotta let the plant come up first. I can't yeah. plant the seeds and then cover it. I have to And I will say like a great use for your chicken yard got seeds in it. Uh-huh. Is to layer that on your, your bare soil 
and then put your screen or wood chips on top of that. So you've got that nitrogen supply there and won't let the weeds come through, that those wood chips on top. And you can plant in that nitrogen rich uh, amendment to the, your our existing soil. That's what I've done in the past. I've even done this in Venice Beach. Okay, so you plant in the stuff that's on top. Yes, yeah, like say this is your bare soil mm -hmm. down here. You would bring in your chicken manure of some uh -huh. kind, nitrogen supplement, right. and then bring your wood chip on top of that. Cover right. it. So that when you do plant, you pull back to that nice yes. nitrogen, uh, nitrogen rich spot. Like I said, I did this in Venice Beach on salt and right. sand, and it's mm -hmm. like, it works. It's amazing. And, and I did do that. They're just struggling, and I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm not keeping it wet enough. Or What's the like, no, I don't think it? there's any fertilizer anymore. No, yeah, there is. Are it's, they yellowing um, or? Well, I have bugs that are coming and eating them. Yeah. Well, because you, the, the bugs are telling you it's either dehydrated or not well. Yeah. They're probably dehydrated. Yeah. yeah. Water is, is a big deal, you know. And But this is what I'm so loving about this. This stuff holds water like a sponge, man. It's just awesome. Yeah. So you never water your garden. This, uh, orchard, uh, I water the garden up front. But this orchard, for 42 years, I've never watered. Ever. Yeah. And we've had major droughts. I had, you see my sequoia trees here? I had the most interesting encounter with God with those one year. I planted them 20, 22 years ago, six, six inch starts. You remember when they weren't here? I do. <laughs> yeah. They, look at the size of them. I know, they're giant. Yeah. And so Amazing. I planted them six inch starts and I covered with wood chips. One year, about four years into it, we had this major drought. We're talking like, really. And I'm watching the interior needles turning yellow. I'm saying, God, I'm going to water trees. And he says, don't you dare water. Like he was like loud. Wow. Don't water your trees. He says, well, they're turning brown. I said, look at the tips. Well, the tips are bright green. I said, that's new growth. The tips indicate the health of the tree. Mm. If your tips are dying back, it's over. The interior needles is not a problem. So it's okay. And, I'm, and it's getting worse. I says, God, you sure? I said, don't water please listen to me so we get this fall a good wind came in and look at the ground and the tree it's got covered with this incredible covering of needles and look at the trees that they didn't look like anything came out they were fine and what he told me was he says those trees are preparing themselves for upcoming droughts and if you watered and they hadn't put down that cover they wouldn't have been as well supported to hold the moisture for upcoming droughts. And I thought, wow, God. Yeah, because the roots were going down. Yeah, and again, that cover was was, hold, was preparing for upcoming droughts to hold more moisture. And the yeah. tree was doing it for survival. And again, I keep coming back to this thing in nature is so genius. This crater didn't miss anything. Everything's built in for optimum health. Mm -hmm. And when I try to change it, help it out, I mess it up <laughs> big time. Yeah. We overthink it. <laughs> yeah, we do, you know. And again, it's just... I love it. And see, the covering is so powerful. And this is what I'm so so enjoying about the effect it's had, had on these trees. It's just, I look at the color of that foliage. Every I mean, leaf. I mean, you don't, you, with chemical fertilizers, you never get anything close. Mm. And I don't do anything. This is what's awesome. I've done nothing. Nothing at all. But this is water the garden. Yeah, because cause basically when I'm planting seeds in the summertime, so I plant my seeds a quarter inch deep. Here's again the, the stupidity of what you're told. All of you have bought seed packages. Mm -hmm. And they say on every one of them, do not plant until after the last frost. They tell you, then, you, then they tell you to plant them an inch and a half deep. Right. If you look in nature, the creator never plants his seeds. He lays them on the ground in the fall, then he sends a severe winter with snow and ice and everything else. They, they, go, they go through, talking about the last frost. And then the seeds come up long before the last frost, and they're okay when the frost happens. Yep. Because they're well. They're strong. The whole issue is health. And that's what they're not addressing. They're not addressing health. When you're in good health, you totally overcome. I have, a, I have an apricot tree in a swim. Apricots here bloom in March, and we always get frost in April. Where it tells you, oh, we had a frost, and you're not going to get any apricots. We'll see. Every year I get, I get apricots, because that tree's strong. And the frost didn't hurt it. It didn't hurt it. It's okay. And so I'm so getting from experience and watching that the issue is health. That's what you want to focus on. Not the disease. Health. Get it well and the disease leaves. It can't live there. <laughs> it's, just, it's so fun. <laughs> okay, so head on over there and get some strawberries. Where's Nick? Thank you. And then we'll, we'll, we'll come, come on. I'll meet you down. I, I walk slow. So. If anybody needs an umbrella, you'll be there. Mm -hmm. What do you got going here? This is grain. Oh. I, I don't know what he's got, but that, all that green is grain. Oh, 
It's, it's like so there's rye and wheat and barley, all kinds of stuff in here. So Look. this was... Comfrey. And the comfrey is really like an incredible fertilizer. Really? And, and he, he's putting it there because he's going to yeah, grow something. Nice. Yeah. And, and, uh, and see what he's done over it. He's put up all these um, strings. He's growing tomatoes. Have, have him grow, grow up those strings, you know, on, on, on those poles. But just, you know, you guys remember when this is just funky dead grass in here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look how lush green that, that the foliage yeah, is. This is like amazing. It's, again, it just it blows me away. Like, this, you, you know, you can't, you can't, you know, fake this. Yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. Is this, is this onion here? Yeah. You guys, you guys have asparagus? Yes. Yeah, we do. I'm going to, I got to, I got to get this. I'm going to get Give us a. Well, what you do though is you cut it, and that stops your growth. People don't know how to pick asparagus. I know. I was going to ask you about that because. Watch me. Okay. I'll show you. You see, most people cut it at the ground. Yeah. What that tells the plant, I still have a stem. Oh. No reason to grow another one. But when you break it off at the crown, down below, it has to send a new one. And I'm eating asparagus all the way until August because I keep breaking them off of the crown. They keep coming back. Do you like I'll show you. Dig no. Into Wood chips. You don't have to dig. Come here. I'm glad you mentioned because I want to share this because it's just. I've had people come from all over the world and everybody, everybody, when I give asparagus to, say, I've never in my life had asparagus like this. Oh, I see one growing. Right here. Now, I'm, I'm going to show you how, though. I want to show you how to pick oh, it, because yeah, yeah. you, you've been doing you, you've been doing it all wrong. <laughs> yeah, I know. Really, <laughs> and that's why you're not getting getting anything back. Well, yeah. See, there's another one coming up right next to it. Mm -hmm. And see, this is this is late June. Most people are all done. Yeah. Mine are mine are mine are. See, I go to the, uh, and I break it off with the crown, way down in there. See? And you see that what that now has told yeah, the told right. the told the plant yep. is that I gotta go, I gotta grow another one. Okay. Now watch, watch this. See, see the water coming out of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's about ready to drip. Yep. Now I'm gonna go share with one of those people because I want to. I, I get so off on oh, yeah. their response. <laughs> Yeah, and you'll you'll find if you pick them like that, they come right back, and you and you okay. and you will have asparagus until you stop picking. Yeah. You want to stop about August because it's important for that that fern to grow because that feeds the crown. Well, okay, so he wanted to cut all of my asparagus is like ferned out and it's got it's developing seeds and stuff, and he wanted to cut it. But I've noticed in the past if I cut it like that. It doesn't do very well. It doesn't. You can see, you see that, that, that fern is feeding the crown. Oh. And it's so essential for that to grow. So you want it? You, you want that to happen. Okay. And so I tell people, if you want a fall crop of asparagus, this is what you can do. It's really cool. Yeah. You can plant two, two, two beds. Okay. The first you harvest in the spring, and you let the second one just grow. And in August, you break off all those ferns, and the sucker starts kicking out all this asparagus. And people are flipping. You got asparagus in fall? <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. It's uh, incredible. Yeah. You know, yeah. But again, it's just, it's just a simple thing of just understanding, you know, pruning. The principle of pruning is so huge. Oh. You, you, you see there in, in John 15, the Father prunes the trees. So bring, pruning is the most stimulating thing you can do to a plant. Nothing will make a plant grow more than cutting it. It's huge. And you see, when I broke that off, that's, I got to grow another one. Right. I had nothing there, so it's okay. going to send another one. But when you cut at the top, it still believes yeah. I have something attached. Even though the top's gone, they, they don't know that because right. there's something attached to the crown. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. it's just... <laughs> it's so simple, but we... I love simple. Yeah. Simple's such a cool place, you can't get lost there. <laughs> Ladybug. Oh. <laughs> simple's a safe place. I just love it. Oh, yeah. Is there oh. anything that the soil still lacks, though? Like, <gasps> sort of minerals? Or I had a soil test. Someone, someone saw the film and had a company in, in um, I think, I, mean, I think, in, anyway, they, they do soil tests for all over the, all over the United States. It blew their mind, the numbers. I'm talking stuff that's like in the 20s and 60s, mine's in the thousands. 
it completely blew them away at the, at, the, at, the, at the mineral content in my soil. I mean, completely off the charts. It was just like, like unbelievable. But again, it's just the nature of the creator. I mean, again, the, 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 the plant foliage, and, and this, you look at, the, look, look, at, look at all the apples in that tree over there, just right, right there. Look, look at the numbers in there. It's just incredible, the production, you know, and you can't deny that. The, you know, this is, this is evidence. This is working. <laughs> So it's interesting how you, you you must prune your tree. I do. I'm an arborist. Uh -huh. Pruning is an art form. Yeah, and so every every uh, spring or whatever or every or every winter. winter. But here's here's what's interesting to me is that, is that commercial growers are so stupid. If you go to orchards that grow your fruit, you'll see all the trees have all these suckers growing through the center, straight up, right. yeah. thick and dense. You can hardly get a tree. And I'm thinking, how stupid. The produce is growing on lateral branches. Why did that grow? And then they go cut it off in the, in the winter. Cut it off up front. If you look at my trees, they have nothing in the center because I walk out here every day, every all summer long, and when something happens, I break it off. I'm not going to let that happen. Why let all this energy go into wood and foliage you're going to get rid of? Let it go into the fruits you want. It kind of just amazes me is this, this simple math. People don't pay attention. Like you're going to cut it off later? Get rid of it up front. It takes energy to create wood and leaves. And then it shades your fruit. Da! This is totally negative. You know? Yeah, I'm looking at your leaves and they're just thick and, and really. And, and look at the look vibrant. at the shine. Yeah. I right. mean, I'm telling you, Miracle Grow will never do that. Yeah. And what I'm loving is I didn't do anything. This is absolutely no effort of mine. You have pears? Yes. Oh my pears but are they're you. They're different. I mean No they're not. How are they different? Like pruning. Oh, I'm going to show you my pears, my apple trees, because I'm in charge. Right. <laughs> Did you hear me? Yes. You see, in Genesis, God told us we were supposed to have dominion. Yeah. If you look at my trees, don't they look like they're under dominion? They're all <laughs> totally bowed over, right. humbly serving me. This is intentional. This is not an accident. It's all about dominion. Right. I'm, I'm having dominion. <laughs> I'm supposed to. <laughs> the right time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Without force. I mean, oh, it's just, it's just, it's just so cool. You're gonna blow my my pears will blow you out. And what's so incredible about my pears? You know, I always tell you if you don't thin, you don't get big, big fruit. My pears will come on like grapes. There's so many, and they're totally huge. They're not small. I believe you. They're not small. <laughs> it's incredible. I mean, just this this abundance just blows me out, man. It's like because awesome. I used to do I used to work hard to fail. You remember when I used to tell? Oh, yeah. I, I was a hard worker, and I had nothing but weeds and just mud, and just it was a, it was a drag. Yeah. You see, my, my, my problem is I can't get my trees to grow up. Oh. You see this? You see this? This honey crisp over there, that little tree. Mm -hmm. Look how look how look how all it's so bent over. Right. Look all the fruit on it. Yeah. You see, everybody else is trying to bring their trees down. I'm trying to get mine up, and I can't because the fruit's too heavy. It's hilarious. I want my trees to get up, but they, that can't happen because the fruit's too heavy. <laughs> that tree's probably um, four years. But go over there and look, just, just check out the volume of fruit, how much fruit's on there. And if you look at the tree, it has hardly any, any, any foliage. You know, it's, I mean, it's really been thinned out. <laughs> yeah. That's a really easy way to prune your trees. Too. Yeah, it's, you know, it's basically convenient. See, I, I can, uh, on yeah. any of my trees, reach everything. Nothing's in my way. It's well, called convenience. It's easy to pick. That's because I can get to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you look at, you look at these poor orchards and they get this ladder, you got to fight to get in the tree. It's just so labor intensive. Like, really? Mm -hmm. So I, I have a small orchard of about, I don't know, five or six trees. Uh -huh. And they're, they're pretty old, I think. They're probably like 10, 20 years uh -huh. old. Uh, should I be thinking about Here, replacing No, no. Those? If they're good varieties, mm -hmm. are they good varieties? Okay, well, that's what you want to know. If they're good varieties, you want to work with them. If not, just get rid of them. It's not good ones because there's so many good ones out there. But what you want to do is no more than one-third 
a removal at any one time. So initially, yeah. you, you get it in, inside the tree and get rid of all the crossovers and all the dead wood and open it up. Second, you start bringing it down. And you do it over time and get it to where you want it. Okay. See, my cherry tree here, cherries are, are, not, are not dwarf. But see, I maintain that with a 10-foot ladder. I, I, 10 foot ladder, just, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it at, 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 at height and I'm not getting taller. Yeah, we have a tree. But you look at the size of that trunk, that's a, that's a big tree. Yeah. And it's young. It's 14 years old. <laughs> Good place to grow your lettuces. Well, yeah, and this is, this, you see the soil is really rich. Why waste it? And what I'm, what I'm finding is, this is what's so, so amazing about God. This is what he's showing us, so, so incredible. I'm, I'm watching these potatoes growing under my trees, potatoes. And what was amazing me, the closer I get to the trees, in the more shade, the taller and thicker the foliage was. So I'm saying, oh, God, what's up with this? This makes no sense. They should do better in full sun. So I went to harvest, and I'm not exaggerating. I had fingerling potatoes under that tree. I had fingerlings a foot long, two and a half inches wide. Fingerlings. They don't get that big. I'm saying, God, talk to me. He says, wait till you get to the tree. When I get to the tree, I'm shocked. It had shoots coming up, one year's growth, an inch and a half base, four foot tall, on dwarf trees. One year's growth. I'm thinking like, wow. And then when the fall happened, all the trees in the orchard, the leaves fell off. That one didn't. And here's, what, here's what the Holy Spirit told me. This is really powerful. He says, Nature is showing you that every living being does better in a communion environment than in isolation. He told me the book facts. When the church started, it happened in homes. People got together and they ate together and they fellowshiped and they read the word. And the church grew exponentially because it operated in community. And nature is showing you the same thing. I thought, wow, this is huge. It's huge. See, it's symbiotic relationship. They feed and support one another. Well, we're told they're taking away from. Yeah. It's such a lie, such a lie. And again, what is so cool about this, this just shows you that in a, in a given space, you can grow so much more. Yeah. You look at, you look at the, the space in here. I mean, how much food I'm growing on my yeah. trees is just totally awesome because you can. Yeah. Why not? Right. Why spread yourself all over the place, maintain extra work, just plant under your trees? <laughs> Would do this. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah. Really so is cool. he wrapping them as they grow? He, they actually... Yeah, see, see, see how the strings are going around him? Right. Mm -hmm. so he's he's, he's wrapped around the string. What is this right here? Uh, I'm not... Hey, Nick? What are, what are these plants you got planted in this right right along the trees? Hawaii marigolds. Marigolds. Oh. <laughs> and <they're> Surprise! <laughs> Hawaiian marigolds. Can I get someone to be expressive? I want you. I want you to eat some as asparagus. Who doesn't like asparagus? Doesn't like it. Okay. Cool. Come here. No, no, really, and and you can and you can bad mouth it all you want. You can you can you can tell me, it tastes bitter. It's tough. It's stringy. It's just I mean you really describe how bad this is. All right. And I want okay. you to I, I want you to start at the stem, which is supposed to be hard and, and stringy, mm -hmm. and eat that and talk to us. I'm sure it tastes like asparagus because I recognize the smell, like, but it's kind of sweet. And it's um, it's really wet like a cucumber. Is it really? Is it that bad? I don't mind it. <laughs> Are you hearing this? This is a lady and lady who does not like asparagus. My son only eats this end. <laughs> I mean, he'll force down the other but No, this is really good, and it's not stringy at all. Are you see? Are you getting it? You see right. now? Would you cook that? No. You don't need to. You see, when when plants, here, let me tell you about about tough plants. When plants struggle to grow in hard, compacted soil, look at my body language. Ah, 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 they're pushing out roots. They're, 
they're, they're, they're communicating in their flavor their bitterness because yeah. life was hard. Sure. When plants grow in aerated loose soil, they grow quickly and they're tender because they grew fast. It's all about how fast you grow. But this is this, but, 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 but I want you to. I, the reason why I have you doing this is I want you to realize the Creator didn't make things bad. Did you hear me? The Creator did not make things bad. He created really good food that tastes good. Because he and, and I'll tell you, you know why you have taste buds to evaluate food. If food doesn't taste good, you shouldn't eat it. Really, you shouldn't. If it doesn't taste good, you shouldn't eat it. Really, it's to protect you because food that's good tastes good. Did, did they, ever, ever get strawberries? Yeah, yeah delicious. Not bad, huh? Not bad. Now, pick pick those pick 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 the flowers. Oh, these? Yeah, and eat it. Just see how good that is. What is it? What is it? Arugula. Mm. They're arugula blossoms. Mm. So good. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. it's delicious. And you can you can just smell when you pick, pick that the odor. You can smell it. It's so pro, pro, profuse. Mm -hmm. I know. Delicious. Mm. Oh wow! Mm. That's an interesting smell. It doesn't make me go. Let me pop that in my mouth. Isn't that good? And wait, you see how how sweet how sweet how sweet the flavor is. You don't need dressing. You don't need dressing. Salad with his dressing. Oh, well, because the salad's not good. It's not his fault. I take the garlic scapes and chop them up and put them in olive oil. Yeah, and then you just need a little. Garlic scapes are so good. I love those. Yeah, they're so good. Yeah, I love garlic scapes. Oh, is that rhubarb in there? No. What's that? Oh, uh, it looks like rhubarb. Swiss chard. Swiss chard. Swiss chard. Yeah, just follow Nick on around there. Now, um, I want to point out something here. To, um, does anybody grow strawberries? I am. Um, how do these look? They look amazing. The, the leaves are so big. Now, um, now. It's in the shade. That's, that's what I want you to get. Yeah. Remember they tell you, uh -huh. you have to grow in full sun. Mm -hmm. I want you to notice how well they're doing in full shade. Mm -hmm. I was wondering about that. Well, I want you to get that you're being lied to. Really. Mm -hmm. So much of what we're told is not real. This is amazing to me. You know, it's in full shade under the, under the tree. How do you get any of it? At my house, the bunnies and then... And because the, I have plenty. There's enough for all of us. The bunnies and the birds don't share at my house. <laughs> well, they do here because there's so much. Mm -hmm. they, they can't eat it all. Delicious. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be delicious. You just let, let it grow. Let it here's how here's how you maintain strawberries. Everybody hear yeah. everybody hear me? This is this is really cool. This is nothing you got out of a book. And this I got from the creator. It was so awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm out. You know, strawberries you grow for a long time. They get really dense, and they get really thick, and you got to thin. And the problem is, what you want to keep on top, the new growth, and all the stuff below, you got to get out. And so it's a lot of work. So I'm not thinning my strawberries. Now, God, you said your yolk is easy, your bird is like this isn't. How would you approach this? He says. Just cover with wood chips. And here's what was awesome. As you cover your bed in the fall when it starts turning ugly, funky, you cover the whole thing with wood chips, a light layer. In the spring, the old plants can't push through so they die and become fertilizers, and the young trees push through totally staggered, and you have a bed of nothing but productive plants with absolutely no thinning. 
<laughs> it's so cool. And then all summer, all winter long, you just walk on the woods. It was cool. You could walk on it. It didn't hurt anything. Mm -hmm. And it was totally awesome. And just a simple covering solves all the pruning process. Oh. It was totally awesome how it worked. Covering is kind of key. Are these lettuce in the middle? They're just volunteers? Yeah. Huh. And go, and, and go, and, and go, and go pick a leaf and, see, and, and eat it. <laughs> see, this again, lettuce should be growing in full sun. Some scallion too over here. And get, and get one of those green ones, you know, just again, just just because I want you to, to really experience what good, oh my God. What, what good, are you, are you getting the, his responses? You know, it's, it's awesome. You know? <laughs> that one? Well, no, the green one's the same. Get the green one right, right at your feet there. You don't have to step. Oh, just, just use those? Yeah, don't, don't go far. Apparently, he hey. saw what he wanted. Okay. There is just no, one leaf, Jack. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm there is no that. bitterness to that. There shouldn't be. The creator's not bitter. You're just bitter. At home. I know. I've been eating. Isn't that good? That's why you use salad dressing. You don't eat it. <laughs> I love asparagus. I love it. Oh, these are beets. Okay. What's that? These are beets, are they? No, no, they're they're oh, they're, they're they're green. Oh, they're green. So, so, I mean, they're red, but they're a a a, a, a salad. See how beautiful the the kale leaves are. Just I mean, it's just you know what I'm so. It's just it's just so awesome how much you can grow under trees. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. You know, I just and just all, all these colors to me is just you know so beautiful to. Now, is anybody grow, growing peas? Anybody growing peas? Come over here. Oh, wow. <laughs> Go pick those peas and eat them. See how good they are. Oh, wow. They don't need a trellis. Well, the, the tree. You see the trees? They're growing in the tree. The tree's supporting it. The tree's a trellis. Okay. That works. <laughs> yeah. They won't hurt the tree. Well, look. Oh my gosh. Is that a snap pea? The sugar snap pea. So I love good. the snap. Yeah, eat it. These are really good. Wow, look at that no, that's that's a um, geese. They're, they're geese. Like geese I'm sure. There's a big turkey out there. Okay. Oh, they said swan. That's right. No, that's the turkey. I read the other Yeah, there's a turkey and then there's a big geese. You can make them a big white one. Like when would you be harvesting garlics? Like in August. Uh, August. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now look look at all the apples on that tree. It's just you know it's, yes. it's just yeah. unreal, man. The, the numbers, you know, just. It's okay. <laughs> you, and you see, I have asparagus growing all over my orchard here because the birds they eat the seeds, they sit in the tree and defecate, oh, and they keep replanting them. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's like they're like weeds. I have, you know, it's just asparagus, asparagus like weeds in my place. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, there's so many of them. Yeah, there. no, that that's fennel under there. That's fennel. That's fennel okay. yeah. Yes. Yes. Do you thin your apples? No. Oh, that's probably a silly question. No, because I don't have time. I don't have time for that. That takes a lot of work. Yeah. And say I, I prune my trees open because I'm trying to reduce the amount of fruit I get. Mm -hmm. But it's not totally effective. But my, my, my fruit gets big anyway, even though I don't thin. Now, Terry, Terry, yeah. come, here, come here, I want to show my, my pair. See, my, my pear trees look, look like apples. I won't let them go up. 
See, see his pear tree? Looks just like my apples. Because I'm not going to put up with them going up. See, it's that whole thing of dominion. Oh, I know. It's awesome. That's nothing compared to the one over there. The one over there has way more. So, we have some old fruit trees. Would you just cut the middle out? What I would do with old fruit trees, yeah. if they're a good variety and they're really good, work with them. If they're not, cut them down and plant because there's so many good varieties out there now. Okay. And a young tree planted in good soil is producing like right away. Okay. Okay. Now, Nick, I want to. Could you show them? You see, the, you see those little shoots developing on top of my, my pear tree here. Mm -hmm. Watch what Nick does. Just picks them off. Yeah. You see, don't let that happen. And you see, why do you want stuff growing in a place you don't want it? And they'll take all the energy out. So when, when they just start, you just keep rubbing, rubbing them off. Mm -hmm. Looks like it. Nice. See, it's just, it's just called maintenance. It's keeping up with everything. My dog would be in heaven if our trees... My dogs, like my dogs love my pears. Oh, they, they go oh, crazy. They love pears. Yep. And you know what's interesting? They know which ones taste the best. Yep. When my Bartlett pears come off this and they're ripe, they'll go over to my, my, my Claps favorite and pick the green ones because they're a better, they're a better pear. I mean, it's phenomenal. As you guys, these are ripe and they're good. No, we like these better. <laughs> it's incredible how they so get it. <laughs> yep. now, now you see here, this tree has been grafted. You see that foliage and the color of pears is different on that branch than here. Oh yeah, those are darker. See, grafting is really a cool thing to do in your orchard. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you the, the main benefit it does, it really stimulates cross-pollination. Instead of having a bee come in, by having it in the tree when the wind blows, it gets cross-pollinated. So it really is effective yep. for pollination. It's really awesome. So I do a lot of grafting. See, my tree, my orchard's pretty full now. I can't plant young trees, but I could always add new trees by grafting. And so I'm always putting oh. in new stuff by, by grafting into it. Okay. And you know the creator grafts? He grafted us the wild olive branch into the natural olive branches. I love doing all the things God does because it's just the best thing to do. <laughs> Aren't these nice potatoes? Uh -huh. My potatoes I put in straws. They're like crazy and they've gotten too tall for me. But I found that the slugs are in the straw. Oh, yeah. They shouldn't bother the potatoes. The potatoes are below the, you know, they're in the ground. They should be okay. They're in the ground? Yeah, they're, they're all, they should be okay. So you have to dig them up. Yeah, I don't, I don't dig them up. See, here's, here's what's so cool about wood chips. And let me, let, me, let me share with you, again, the stupidity of what we're, what we're taught. They tell you when you plant potatoes, you cut them in small pieces and plant pieces of potatoes. If you want to ensure a small crop, that's what you do. That will guarantee a small crop because... At each eye, it sends out a shoot. So the smaller pieces, the less eyes, less shoots. And as the potato initially grows, it feeds on the potato. That's its food. Mm -hmm. So by having a small piece, you limit its food. Mm -hmm. You know how I plant potatoes? I okay. plant and harvest the same day. The mm -hmm. same day. I come in here on my knees. I pull up my plants. I don't use no tool, no fork. I move the wood chips away. I take out totally clean potatoes. Like they weren't dirty, they're not dirty. And I get my biggest potato and put back in the hole the same moment. And I plant and harvest the same day and I'm done. Are you getting how easy this is? Mm -hmm. All the work we do, all this, you know, coming back in the spring and tilling soil to plant potatoes is so dumb. You got a hole dug. Use it. Put the potato back. And always put your biggest back because you're investing in your future. The little ones taste the same as the big ones. By planting the big ones, you get a bigger crop, more, more production. And that's in the fall? In the fall, yeah. And here's my, here's, again, these challenges are so blowing my mind. You see, it used to be that in October, September, my potatoes would start turning yellow and be finished. Mm -hmm. You know what's happening here? These things are blooming in October. <laughs> They're acting like we're not done. And I'm saying, I'm over it. You're coming out because I'm not going to wait. They're not going to stop. It's blowing me away. Stuff doesn't stop because it's so nutrient dense. So yeah. harvest while it's still blooming? I'm, I'm harvesting while it's blooming because I, wanna, I don't want to be in the wet. How many uh -huh. pounds of potatoes would something like this be? Oh, incredible. And then I got over the, over there, that whole area covered with potatoes. I get so many potatoes. But I'll tell you something about potatoes. I believe potatoes are probably the, the best survival food on the planet. It'll feed you the whole year without refrigeration. Potatoes are amazing food. Mm. 
And, and they tell you they're not good for you because of how they're growing. They're, it's so pathetic. But when you're growing good potatoes, they're really nutrient-dense. Nutrient and I'll tell you something. We grew up in Los Angeles in the 50s where my, my parents knew people who had come from the Holocaust, who had the tattoos still in their arms. And their, their, their story was, we survived on potato peels. The German cooks would peel potatoes for the officers and throw it in the garbage, and that's what they ate, and they survived. Those stupid Germans didn't realize that's the most nutritious part of the potato you're peeling off, dummy. You should be eating that. But they, you know, aesthetically, it had to look, make it look good, you know. But again, it's just... Yeah, because those people, people survive that. But I'm just saying, you know, potatoes is amazing. This one here is a, a German butt, butter ball. It's like a huge, and the yellow, yellow flesh is just awesome. It just makes the most amazing baked potatoes. Yeah. What about rotating crops? I'm so glad you asked that. And again, we go back to our first answer. Look at nature. In nature, there's absolutely no crop rotation right. anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's so pathetic how they tell us to do this stuff that's so hard, so labor-intensive, and so stupid. Mm -hmm. I grow the same thing, same thing in the place year after year after year. They keep getting better. What's up with moving them? Mm -hmm. If you find a nice place, keep using it. Mm -hmm. It's just so dumb, these things we do, because nothing in nature demonstrates that. Mm -hmm. So you dig these potatoes. I don't dig. No tools. I, I simply pull the plant up with by hand mm -hmm. I move the wood chips away and the potatoes are right there oh, yeah. totally clean and then, they weren't in dirt uh -huh. I mean it makes it I come out of my hands are totally I, I don't, I'm not dirty and you look at when people do potatoes they get a fork and they're poking the ground they poke holes in the potatoes because the ground's hard right. it's so pathetic how hard we work according to what we're taught I mean make it hard for me so as the potatoes grow, do you put more wood chips around it? No, I don't. I don't do a thing. Oh, this is done. I, 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 I now, now. What, what I'll do in some places, if I need, after I plant them, I'll come with a cover, add more wood chips, and just cover the whole bed, put another layer on. And I just keep. But, but this was was plenty there, so I, I didn't have to. But just, but if you get get shallow, then just add more wood chips. But that's after you planted. I see that you have some little bug holes and stuff that you don't worry about that. At Not all. at all. Okay. It's not going to hurt the plant, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, um, Bugs got to eat too. The, and, and, and they didn't stay, you know, obviously they didn't stay because it's too wet. So they're going after something that's got, you know, they're hungry and they're trying to eat, but this is, man, this is just too much water content. I, I want, so they want well, um, f fiber. Mm -hmm. So they go after stressy, hydrated plants. Plants that are full of water, they don't, they don't want those. And you have fruit trees right in the middle of the potatoes. But yes. Can really affect the root system for the, you know, by having the potatoes around it? It does affect it in a positive way. It makes it makes it grow better. Okay. It's hilarious. I'm telling you, man, it's huge. It's amazing how much better my produce grows better with pro my, my trees grow better with, with plants under them. Mm -hmm. It's a symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's potatoes, yeah. every living thing. Mm -hmm. Well, again, if you, if, if you have eyes and you're evaluating color, mm -hmm. I mean, nothing looks depleted. Everything looks pretty, pretty vibrant and healthy. Mm -hmm. Well, duh. Mm -hmm. I mean, the evidence is <laughs> what you see. You know? So don't tell me that it's going to stress it out. It's not good for it. You know, the, the evidence is so, so obvious. So I want, I want to show you all. Grafting, I think, is really a, a, a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. And if you look at books, they make it really hard. Mm -hmm. Got to have grafting paste, and you got to hold things together with pins. And it's really labor intensive. So I'm asking the creator how to graft. What he showed me was so awesome, and you'll never see this in a book. But I want to I want to show, show it to you because it's so powerful. It makes grafting so easy, totally easy. Come over here because I I have a an example. You see this tree right here? This apple tree. You see this branch coming off on, by the ground? That, there's a piece of black tape on it. Uh -huh. See right here? And if you look at the apples there, those apples are different than the rest of the tree because it's a, a different variety. So how you graft is the cambium layer, that's the green below the bark, is the only live part of the tree. The wood is not living. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. The center of the tree is not living. It's there for support. That's why you see trees with cavities, whole interior of the trees are gone, still living because the cambium is still there. 
So when you graft, you have to make sure the cambium on both pieces connect, touch. And so what you do is you, 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 come, you come with your saw and you cut off a, a branch you're going to graft into. Just You cut it straight across. And then you get your, your hand pruners and you go to the center and you split it. You crack it open. Then the piece you're grafting, you cut at an angle like this and you slide into that opening. And here's what you use, black tape. The electrical tape from Taiwan, not the U.S. because it's too thick. That, that thin stuff will stretch and you wrap tight with the tape. And what that does, it pulls everything into alignment so it's connected. And because it's wrapped with the tape, it's not going to move. It's not going to flux out of there. And because it's wrapped with the tape, it keeps all the air out so it doesn't dry out. And because it's black when the sun hits it, it heals quicker. It's so awesome how it works. It's so simple. Black tape and the pruners you can graft all day long. It's so fun. So easy. And it's and it's just you know it's just so cool. You you, got all, you come in and you see all these different colored apples in your in your tree because it's it's really cool. You know, keep adding new varieties. Does that Not, help with pollination too? Exactly. Well, I'll, I'll, well, over here this pear tree. That tree is, is quite old. You can see by the size of it, and it's never borne more than like six pears. It's a boss pear. And I'm getting frustrated. Says, man, this is taking up space. Not producing. So what I did, I put my clap's favorite over there. That's that one right behind it. It's just totally loaded with, with, with pears mm -hmm. and grafted into it. The second year after the grafting, the Holy Spirit was on me. He says, I want you to watch that graft. Pay attention. Like he says, watch it. So that thing bloomed like crazy. That year, that tree was totally full of pears. Mm -hmm. And what he showed me was, you see, I got pear trees right there, 30 foot away, but it takes a bee an effort to go from there to there but being in the tree when the wind blows mm -hmm. the cross pollination covers the whole space mm -hmm. it was awesome I'm like wow and so you can see in that tree see all those shoots i'm grafting all kinds of stuff in that tree because i want the thing to produce you know i get it man this works you know so it's just it's so, so fun mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah the, so you're, you're you've grown your tree for your for a few years and then you have a branch that you want to graft, but where does that branch come from? From another tree? Another tree. Yeah. You, you, know, if so you, you probably you, get rid of that other tree. And... No, no, no. Some, 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 some friend you has a, has a really cool apple variety, like, wow, that is so good. Well, when you prune, could you save me a piece of wood? Because yeah. I want that. Yeah. And then you graft into yours. Okay. Yeah, yeah you, you know, you've, you've been to places where, like, ah, that is such a good apple. Well, find out where it came from and get some cyan wood. Because you can have it. <laughs> you can, you know, you know, have that have that develop in your place. Do apple trees, apple branches always need to be grafted into an apple tree? Apple to apple, pear to pear. God is not into, into confu confusion. I'm serious. It's, it's you ordered. Don't have trans trees. It's ordered. There's an order in nature, and you're not going to violate it. And, and you need to know if uh, the branch that you're grafting on will pollinate the others. Because they that, don't all pollinate each other, right? You know, I, I haven't found that to be an issue. I don't even know who pollinates what, but man, I get tons of fruit everywhere. Oh, okay. And I don't even pay attention. You know, I think so much of it, they, they, they want to make it more complicated than it is. <laughs> you know, you know, you got to have this right. As, man, I just plant stuff, you know, and it just grows and does well because it's supposed to. I know. Well, you see a bird drop that, you know, and it's just growing great. You know? <laughs> Asparagus farm, and from the time he was three years old, he was cutting asparagus at four in the morning. Oh, yeah, asparag asparagus is really potent food. It's so nutritious because it has such a deep root system. Yeah, you know where you, you know you find you find it is by doing it yourself. Because you see, they changed all the rules. Once it's grown, whatever the producer wants to do afterwards is okay. Let me tell you something about orga organic food. My wife is buying these small organic carrots over in Sunny Farms and Swim, and they're labeled organic. My dog won't eat them. My dog goes out in my garden and pulls my carrots, eats them all day long. And so I says, Carol, I went to, I went to the owner. I says, um, what's up with this? He says, Paul, they raise them organically. Now, don't walk in that space because I just planted that all to beet seeds. Just, just, just be, it's all, all just got planted in there. That. And so, I, and so he says, yeah, they, they raise them organically, but the producer sprays them for shelf life. She bought this organic lettuce in Port Townsend at the at the co-op. 
I peel the outer leaves off because they're getting, well, I, I give my chickens, they won't eat it. I says, Carol, that organic lettuce you bought, the chickens are saying it's not, not organic. They won't eat it. See, I tell you, my animals teach me a lot. Let me tell you something about animals that have over on us. See, animals have instinct. They, ne they never let their instinct override their brains. Do you hear me? They never let their instinct override over Where we have spirit, we also have brains, but we let our brains override our spirit. And we make a lot of stupid mistakes. But insects are, I mean, animals are amazing. They're totally run by instinct, and which is totally correct, accurate. And they never make a mistake. They know what's safe to eat. Yeah. Now, does anybody growing spinach? I want all of you to come over here to my spinach. Pick it on, on, on the left side. Don't do it because I just planted it. But I want you to notice the size of those leaves. How big they are and how dense they are. Because I don't think you've ever seen spinach like that. Yeah, p just pick a big pick a big leaf, you know, right off the stem. Eat the stem because you'll find the stem's really tender and see how good it is. Where's your nearest water spigot? Right, right there. Let, let the water run out of the hose first. You see this? Here you're planting closer this year. Yeah. Well, see, I, I used to I used to plant free because that's my road will get through. I'm thinking like, why not do that anymore? Why why do I, I need all that space? I can go walk in a smaller space, and so. <laughs> yeah, come come, pick pick a leaf of that and see how good it is. And look at the density. It's not thin. What's that? It's called um, Olympia. Olympia. Okay, so what is it meant to be that big, or it just grows so big here? I, I just don't. I think it's called nutrient density. If you're eating well, you're going to grow big. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't help it. Yeah. <laughs> it's go, so good. Yeah, go, go pick a, a nice big lens. This is how good it is. It's, it's really ni nice flavor. Does anybody grow? Does anybody grow herbs? Yes, I do. How do you like that mullein there? Isn't that awesome? The size? This one? Yeah. Oh my Look how big that oh, mullein is. Huge. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> We've got one at our place that's probably that, that big. Yeah. It's just. It's awesome. I love it. Yeah, that's the challenge I have is you gotta be so careful with these herbs. They go to seed. Yep. If you don't cut them before, you have them everywhere. Yep. Man, I spend so much hours weeding out herbs. <laughs> he created seed that bear, he plants that bear seed of their own kind. And it's all about production. You know, it's just, it's just again, he made, he made things so, you know, um, productive. Now, is there anybody growing raspberries? Come on, I'll show you something. I was going to ask you a question. Like, they spread like crazy. In they the do. Backyard. How do you control them? I, pu I pull them out. Yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. But I want you to notice that in most raspberry beds, you see people cutting the tops off. Mm. I want you to notice my raspberries, the tops, how full they are. Mm -hmm. What's up with reducing your fruit content? Mm -hmm. And when they get heavy, they bend over. Mm -hmm. They don't stay up to uh, high. And so, and another thing you see in raspberry beds, you see all kinds of dead canes. Yes. Yeah. How dumb. You see, raspberries only bear one year, so after you finish the fruit, cut out all those canes, let the new ones come in, give, give them space. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, to me, it's just totally amazing when you see how people do things like... It's so much easier. It's totally easy, yeah, and then you got space, you know, just when you finish... Raspberry twice a year. Uh-huh. So I would just cut them after the fall? After, 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 after the last, last, last cut, you know, when the fruit's all off, there's no more? Yeah. It's out of here. Oh, my goodness. And then you have, you, you, you have all these young ones coming in, and so leaving that old stuff mm -hmm. just compacts and condense you know crowds the space so you shouldn't thin them out not not thin them out thin out cut out the, the dead ones that thins it out okay. the when ones you, that have 
are already, already produced, you just that's one? thinning. You're getting rid of it because it's finished. Okay, and, and, you, and you'll... And you, they get so clumped, do you, you know, so take them and then move the on? <laughs> well, I, I've been, I've been, these, these have been here over 20 years, it you know. produces once. Each that, branch. Each yeah. branch. Mm -hmm. So when it's done, so as soon as you're done, just cut it. Uh, you get your pruners and cut it off at the base. You know. All the way down the bottom? At the, again, stumps. Here's the thing that amazes me. You look at people, how they put it, all these stumps. What's the point of the stump? It's ugly. Mm -hmm. It's not going to produce. Get rid of it. You mean to the ground? To the ground. To the ground. We're, okay. we're talking congested. Who wants congestion? I'm thinking I need, need to do that with my hydrangeas. I keep looking down. <laughs> We, they should be thinned. And yeah. again, you, you, you want to get at the ground and get rid of all the stuff that's crowding and just yeah. save what you want to keep. And then just you know, arrange it nicely. What is that? That's mullein, an herb called mullein. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, it's, a, it's an herb. It's like comfrey. It's not, it's, it's mullein. mullein. Mullein and garlic make a really good you, yeah. treatment for ear, ear infection. Now I want you to notice my, my beehives here. Oh, this is for mason bees, oh, yeah. and you see, and 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 you see them come. And I tell you, they're just I get so many bees, and this place just hums with bees, you know, because you can see, see about here. This is totally because it's, and ma mason bees are really good pollinators. Mm -hmm. See the problem with honeybees in, in April, my trees are blooming. It's cold outside, mm -hmm. and they have honey at home. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna go outside, mm -hmm. where mason bees have no honey. And anything that's pollinated, they're on it because they're always hungry. So they're really much better pollinators. And actually, honeybees were brought from Europe. They're not, they're not native to America. They were, they were imported. Well, these guys are native. And these guys don't get the mites like the honeybees. Yeah. And, and they don't sting. They look like, like big black, black flies. They're really, they're really friendly. They're just that nice to be around. So you just clean them out? I don't do anything. I just drill holes and let them, let them do it all themselves. I don't do a thing there. Just... Let them. They need mud to. They 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 do they do it all on their own. Yeah. And they clean it out when they need. Yeah, they they do. It's just it's just hilarious to watch them, you know. So you just drilled a whole bunch of holes in that piece of wood. No. I did that quarter inch quarter inch holes. What you want, what you want? <laughs> don't leave leave it back. Don't go all the way through, and you're done. <laughs> and you just, and how I discovered I have them. You see my barn over there? It has all those holes in the wood. Mm. I got that stuff really cheap, and I started noticing all these bees developing. I thought like, wow, what are they? Oh, those are mason bees out. Cool. This is really great, and so I just wanted to get, get more of them. Huh. How deep do those holes go? All the way to about it's about a half inch in the back is where it ends. All the way back there. You want a solid back. Three inches. Right? Yeah. No. So just just you know a four by whatever you know is those are probably a four by twelve you know. Okay. So the females go in the back. They lay the female eggs at the back. Mm -hmm. Build the wall. Uh, after mm -hmm. that, which mm -hmm. is the mason part, lays another egg, builds another wall, lays another egg, and then the male yeah. eggs are toward the front, and they're more expendable, you know, in case there's a, you know, woodpecker okay. comes by. Yeah. And, yeah. and this is one big kind piece like of wood. Park. Yeah. It's not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And the reason they laid all the males on the end is because the males oh, actually hatch sooner. So first yeah. thing in the spring, mm -hmm. the males will hatch a week early, mm -hmm. and they'll sit by the hole that they hatched out of, waiting mm -hmm. for their sisters or whatever mm -hmm. to come yeah. out <laughs> yeah the females and they'll come out and then just right then out. and there he mates them Chilling. dies within a week and the mm -hmm. females go six weeks pollinating mm -hmm. and refilling the holes mm -hmm. wow. awesome. now that you're all here i, I, I want to is, is this man is david divine oh, he, oh, he he um he wrote a book about what's going on here oh. he has it there in his hand yeah. oh. And you can tell them how to how to access it. This is a second edition. Yeah, see, thanks to Aaron, I now I, I I do grounding when I come here. <laughs> He's the first one that's barefooted. So uh, yeah, about five years ago, we did this book, Growing Food God's Way. Mm -hmm. And they're Paul on the back, myself, and the foreword is by Joe Salatin. And then just what a week or so ago, two weeks maybe, uh, the second edition got printed and, and turned it. So it's it's bigger in size, mm -hmm. thicker. Bigger print. No, no, I wish. No I wish it was bigger print. Uh, it's it's just more it. volume. We, and so we're we're revising and updating. See, when this was written, the, all of a lot most of that wasn't happening. Yeah. Only nasturtiums were yeah. under his trees. Yeah. So we're adding uh, a lot of that in here. Six new chapters. Nice. Um, bibliography with the actual pictures of the books that he recommends and an exhaustive index. So 
Um, well, uh, the ebook is on Amazon, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, the paperbacks, um, I'm not sure if it's up right yet for the uh, growingfoodgodsway.com is just uh, the way to get the paperbacks right oh, now. Okay. Yeah, that's the way to get the, uh, we're not, we're probably not going to hold hands with Amazon on the paperbacks. Mm -hmm. Good on you. Yay. Mm -hmm. Do you have a stock right now that we can buy? <laughs> did you bring any? I brought some, but, you know, people don't come here to spend money. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> well, she, she just asked. Oh, okay, yeah, well, the back in the car okay. when the people are turning in their umbrellas, and I'll be back there. Okay. Yeah, I'll be back there. You can, oh, but this is a petting zoo one. You can just look at it and decide whether <laughs> you're interested in it. Hey, Howard, where's yes. Howard? Do me a favor. So I want to show you how this tool works. In the back of my truck okay. is a tool. When we get over the herb garden, I'm gonna, this is the most amazing weeding tool on the planet. I'm going to show you. Cause oh, you, you, you it is, you're going to see how it works. It's just mind boggling how cool that works. The whole thing of bending over and pulling weeds, man, is over. I, I, I went and weeded, Nick, Nick had one, and he says, you got to try this. I went to my orchard in 20 minutes, I had the whole orchard weeded. I was totally blown away it is amazing you'll see how it just and, and, and then one side of it you, you use it for you can flip it over and you can grade like a rake it's just it's so totally awesome design yeah so so um just grab it and we'll get over and show how, how it works i had bought the tool because of my lyme disease and it kills my back bending over and weeding and stuff and doing all kinds of stuff and it's just more efficient to walk and get it done and I tried getting him to use it last spring. He was really stubborn. <laughs> I'm just gonna use my asparagus knife. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> then, just, you know, it was a couple weeks ago. Was, yeah. see, he walked out with his bucket oh, and his asparagus knife. I was like, let me do that. I took the bucket and I'm here to use this. I showed him how to do it. And he did it in 20 minutes. He's like, I gotta get one. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. That was so funny. What do you think, Paul? It's a collinear hoe. The one that he has. Now, when we were talking about screen wood chips, mm -hmm. that's what all this is here. You see how see how how nice that is, yeah. and you see you can you can plant right in it seeds. You know, and and, and you just basically just it's so, so it makes such a nice cover. And this is all wood chips, but it's been screened, so it's fine. Yeah, sifted. Yeah, went through went through the screen. You know, but just and you can just see how well they do it right here in the swim. It's, it's called it's called cascade cascade. Um, and they have they sell bark and everything, yeah. but everybody brings their yard waste and they grind it up, and they and, and they and they compost it and they screen it. Okay. It's like thirty bucks a yard, but my feeling is, man, to get a, to to do that myself, it's worth thirty bucks. Oh, yeah. And you could just you know I don't know if you you know you can just tell. I think these plants are are, are healthy. I mean yeah. you can tell by looking at them, you know, yeah. and then you can yeah. see what they're growing in. Mm -hmm. Nothing but composted wood chips. It's just awesome. Yeah. Well, the soil below is always being fed by this stuff on the top, you know, so it's always upgraded. So, Paul, in, your, in the book, is there um, winter stuff, winter information? Yeah. Okay. There's all kinds. Winter, um, here, what, 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 again, so much is just practice. I love cilantro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But cilantro bolts quick. Right. So I had the most amazing experience. I planted probably six times a year. Mm. But one year I planted at the end of September and it came up really quick. But in October it got cold oh, so and didn't it did. grow. And that cilantro went the entire winter and didn't, didn't bolt because it was cold. I'm thinking like, this is so awesome. Well, and it got down to four degrees. And it didn't freeze because really? it's really a healthy plant. You look at root goes straight down. It's a yeah, deep-rooted thing. Right. And you know what's so, so cool about cilantro? Cilantro really reveals the, the nature of Father God, mm. like no other vegetable. Okay. Let me explain why. You see, when God created cilantro for us, He had this generation in mind. He had us in mind. And here's why. For 6,000 years, food was safe to eat, and it had no heavy metals in it. Right. You hear me? Yeah. Food had no heavy metals because everything was organic. When it started using heavy um, chemical fuels, heavy metals started developing in food. And you know what cilantro does? It's a natural key that takes heavy metals out of your body. Yeah. Wow. And what I'm loving about God is that 
For 6,000 years, that wasn't necessary, mm -hmm. but he had us in mind. Mm -hmm. And what I so get, he didn't miss anything. What a provision. It's awesome. And I, I, I have cilantro growing, I eat it every day because it's so, it has the highest vitamin C of anything that grows. It's really nutrient dense, powerful food. Hmm. And it's really good for you. Yep. you know? But the, the, having it all winter is so awesome. Oh, yeah. But that September 1st, planting it then, mm -hmm. you'll get it all winter because it, it won't bolt. So it's just, again, it's just, again, the, the, what I'm loving about, I'm going to just show you something, get over here. You can, you can even see it from here. You, you see that, um, that, that yellowing is chamomile oh, uh -huh. in the herb garden. Yeah. You see right in the middle of it, there's a section of total green chamomile. Uh -huh. So Massing got God like, what's up with this? And he showed me. If you, look at, if you look at that grass there, you see three lines that are darker green, because that's my drain field. The drain field is going through there, and because it's getting sub irrigation, it's not dry, drying up. I'm thinking like, whoa! So, I, so for all you people who have who have who have outside the, the county, plant your garden over your drain field. <laughs> I'm serious. Grass, Utilize yeah. all that waste water. <laughs> so, and again, when you realize how, how powerful sub, if you look at long riverbeds, how green everything is. And if you remember in Genesis, before it rained in the Garden of Eden. God watered with a mist coming out of the ground, a sub irrigation. Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate way to water. Rain was second, mm -hmm. second thought. Mm -hmm. So it's just so cool. And then and again, the, the beauty is I'm utilizing all my wastewater, you know, sub irrigating my herb garden, you know, just. <laughs> Let's, we'll head up. Hey, Nick, yeah, you want to take my, yeah. 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 And then, um, and then we'll, and then when we come back, we'll, we'll uh, I want to show you my herb garden. I'll take everybody out this way. You follow okay. me. Okay. Give them call time to get over there. Well, you know what? My reality is this is only temporary, and I'm going to travel the speed of thought forever, <laughs> and I'm going to and I'm going to enjoy it more than everybody else. That's right. Yes, That's right. I'm going to really enjoy it. Like this is awesome. I'm going to get at a level that no one, nobody else has because of this. So it's our future. In God is awesome. Amen. Travel the speed of thought. That's so much faster than flying. It it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Did you sing, Paul? No, that was so cool. Carol had this book that so fit her her, her personality. What? It, it, it the, personality? the title was Alkalize or Die. It's very direct. Oh. oh. <laughs> you know? I got it. And in that yeah. book, that guy made a statement that changed my life. He said, all pain comes from an ass condition in your body. I and I said, Carol, I can test that. So I came home and I ate out of my garden only, and all the pain left. And what was interesting, we were over in Seattle one day, one of our friends, there's this awesome Chinese restaurant, you got to come with us. And so I went there and I ate that food, the next morning all the pain was there. And I totally connected the dots. Where were we? we oh, so one of your friends in, says, there's this really cool Chinese restaurant, you got to come and eat with us. Was and it a Thai restaurant? It's Chinese. It was cooked. It was cooked dead food. And it was phenomenal. The next morning all the pain was there. And so it was like God was giving me a connection, like, yeah. And so it's been, pain is exhausting. It takes energy out of you. And I feel so thankful to be pain-free because I used to have a lot of it. And I know what that was like. And it's just, it's such a blessing not to have pain. What do you say about the herb garden? I'm curious. Anyway, I'm going to be over there. Oh, I, I was just going to show them, I just showed them about your, your, your cameo that's, that's green in, in, in the drain field, you know. <laughs> it's that all, that, all that yellow stuff right up front. And you see right in the center, there's a, there's a section that's all green. Right. Same stuff. Because it's because it's on it's on the drain field, I see. you know. And again, is, is, our garden. huh? <laughs> we have to move our garden. <laughs> well, Put it on the drain field. But you, you know what? Again, you know what's so cool about God is. Oh, you want to make sure you tell him you got to use organic. No, you, you want to live. You want to live. You want to live clean in any way. You know. Oh well, we know. Yeah, but but here, here's here's what I think is so cool about God is that how I, I had no idea what I was doing and it's, my, my original chicken pen was there, and one one day Carol says I want an herb garden. I'm thinking like the effort's going to be the clear grounds. I said, you know what? I'm just going to move the chickens down there because I know this soil is really good. Yeah. And then I put, and I didn't realize the benefit of having the sub, the irrigation, you know, the drain field sub irrigating everything. I never water in there and everything just grows really well. It's just fun, awesome. But well, again, grass grows. If you just have grass, you can see. I know, I know. And here's what I'm, I'm so, uh, this is nothing, nothing I planned, but God just totally set this up for me, you know, totally. We're supposed to be keep going that direction because when he comes back, he's going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> he, 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 he's, he, 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 he's not really, he, he's, he's not real fast, so I'm good. 
Oh, okay. I just didn't know. I obviously don't come out here. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did. Yeah. 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 I know. Well, I've got a midwife friend here from Eastern Washington that's oh, going to spend the night. Here. Oh. And she was actually going to maybe move here, but I wasn't busy enough. I'm starting to get busier now. We had one of her friends came up from Mexico. She's here, here for a week. Yeah. She's got Ten days. Ten day, yeah, she's a fourth, fourth gener generation, generation midwife. Mexican midwife and herbalist. And she was so fun because she so got off on this place. She's out every morning picking strawberries. I and mean, she just, just really just enjoyed making, herself. And making, making soup. And, and she, <laughs> I, I got to feed you, Paul. I mean, she, the Hispanic, especially yeah. in, indigenous, they're very like, they're matriarchal. So it's a matriarchal society. I really think the women really rule. But they really served the men. I mean, to the degree that she was so upset every time we'd come home and Paul was in bed already. Because Paul goes down, he goes to bed at sunset. Yeah. Or even before, because it was before. It was like 8 o'clock or something. He was going to bed. And uh, wh where are all these, all these cameras? This is, um... Is, is this you? <laughs> that nub. <laughs> that nub. Is, is, is that nub? You got three or four cameras now? Five? Five? You got them all rolling today? Are you kidding? We're, you're listening to us. Yeah. Eradicate that. Well, he 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 does he does editing. Whenever you're on, that is the most watched, most listened to anything. Okay. I know, but I come here, Carol. Come on, let's get over in front of this one. <laughs> nah, I'm too direct. I think people are. Like, you know what's so what's so cool about him? So again, this is God. He he's a he's a prepper. And he's been doing this, this this video thing for years. And he started doing this, and thousands are watching it. Yeah. And, he, and 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 you, you get what God does all this for me. He has these people coming here, oh, video, and then just puts it all out there. It's, and you could not have done this. I could never have. When you were younger. And I and I couldn't have done it even at because I'm not I'm not this kind of a person. Like I knew that something was. I kept telling him, something's gonna happen. You watch. I said. The enemy's trying to take you out, and this means something's ahead. Yeah. You know, and so when God started yeah. manifesting this whole... Oh, look at your fig trees. Isn't that awesome? And look at all the figs on them. Figs? We got a I... tree from him. Yeah, you gave us one. Huh? Oh, my gosh. We have, like, yeah. oh. one... It's like we, got, we got six. Six? So is that how many? wonderful. Oh, just... And they're such good food. And, and, oh, and today, oh. you know, Aaron, Aaron froze, a, froze a whole bunch, and he made a smoothie of it, and, and it was just incredible. Yep. You know, because he, he, he froze a lot of them. Oh, he did? Yeah. Today. Yeah, and it was incredible. Now, you know, it's just so remember. so cool that um, he's the figs are lasting, you know, in fr freezing yeah, like that. I have some in my freezer, too. Did you guys have... What else to put with it? Like, I mean, you can't... You can put They're stuff. really rich, you know. What yeah. The figs? The figs. You ever put, use oat milk? Like oat milk, yeah, figs, um... What else did I put? I, I put um, hemp seed, um, oh, yeah. just to kind of tone it down a little bit, because yeah. it is really rich. Yeah, and, you know, you don't have to have a lot, just like... No, I know. But there's... Oh, and my dog's you, And, and you know, figs, figs is the highest alkalinizing food that exists. Really? You know, J.I. Rodell wrote a book what about... Say, it's the highest alkalinizing of all foods. Oh, yeah. He had a book, and he lists all the alkaline foods, and, and like, figs is 30, the next one below is soybeans 12. And you know what's interesting about, about how God describes the millennium? He lists two fruits. Everybody. And everyone will be under their own vine, grapes, mm. and under their own fig tree. Mm. I don't think that's coincidental. Right. I think he's making a statement. Yeah. These fruits are really nutrient dense. Yeah. These are really good for you. Yeah, the, the Bible's amazing when you start really looking at what's, what it's oh, saying. Know. You know, yeah. There's so much incredible wisdom and guidance and, and light there. <laughs> oh my goodness. He, he does it well, man. This is awesome. <laughs> Too many views. Well, not well with my soul. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that a nice color, that red, that Japanese yeah, maple? that is beautiful. It's a gorgeous tree. Yeah. Little Japanese maple. Pink. Yeah. Everybody, Angelina says, I have never seen a, a Japanese maple that color. But it was, it was redder. <laughs> Yeah, it's supposed to. It's supposed. It's supposed to grow in full shade. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I always like doing things they say you can't. Right. <laughs> put it here. So your your one tree that was all bent over and split out is gone. Yeah, I'll tell you why. Uh, oh, that one. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. oh the oh, willow, yeah, just it just rotted. Yeah, both mm -hmm. of our willows are gone. Mm -hmm. The other big one, we just. But look, look at the one Carol gave me. Fur. See the weeping willow over there. Yeah, she, she, did, he didn't want that. He was so and, upset. And, at and so I stuck it out in the you woods. Know, gonna make a mess. I, I didn't know how goodness. big it was, so I stuck it out, out in the woods, having no idea it would be protection for the Isn't chickens. And see, it's so yeah. awesome for the chickens because the chickens come under there and the eagles can't get to them. It really creates amazing protection for the chickens. Go down in there deep. You'll find white ones. They're white strawberries, and they're really good. They're sweet. Those are the pineapple. Yeah, pineapple. Oh, oh. Those are the ones that really? Nice. Yeah, pineapple. Yeah. I know. Never mind. We're only we're, kidding. We're not talking about anybody. Oh, yeah, uh -uh. No. No. I don't know who no. you're talking about. You better get that one out of there. We don't know. People. Look at you. Look at you. We were talking about the book of James. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, his place is full of chips. Yeah. Yeah, he's got oh, more than, he's got blackberries so growing in them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he does, the little short ones. The good ones. Yeah. I like those, I like those, they're so sweet. Oh, yeah, they're so hard the, to find, too. The little, the, the wild. Yeah, isn't that, look, look, how, look how green those are. And you can just, you know, just compared to all the rest, it's just, just right there in the center, you know, just because of the sub-irrigation from the, the drain field. I don't know what that is. It's something you gave me to plant. Oh, really? Yeah, it was from you. It was, it was from you. <laughs> Go plant this in the herb garden. Yeah, well, I don't. I I don't know. Don't pull it out. Well, I'm not, but it's. You guys, you guys have you have you have fennel. Do we have yeah. Fennel? This chocolate fennel, oh. go eat some of that. You blow your mind with the flavor of that. You just eat the fern? The fern, yeah. Go check it out. It is incredibly delicious. It is. Eat, chew it up, man. It's really sweet. Wow. Wow. So, so if you like, like some, you don't have to do that, but all around here, you can see I have it growing everywhere. You just dig up stars to take home, but it's just, it's such wow. a, I think it's such a beautiful plant, but again, the flavors is really delicious. That's amazing. Yeah. Is parsley growing? Not, not here, out, out in the garden I do. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's, it's I didn't see it, but it's, it's right next, it's, it's not next to the pump house, the first row. It's not real big yet because it oh. takes a long time to get up, mm -hmm. but I have, I have both the flat leaf and the, and the curled leaf. Now, do you use thyme in your in, in your cooking the herb? Uh, the herb. Sometimes my family doesn't like it very much. Do you like it? It kind of tastes like dirt. I want you to be very careful. Is that it? Yeah, but I'm talking like a tiny piece because you're going to blow your mind at how potent it is. You see how strong that is? That's really good. It's really good. I don't, I don't but it's potent. It's not like anything you get at a store. You know? I've never had it fresh. It's just, it's awesome. It doesn't taste that good at all. No, it's really good. But it's really, the flavors is phenomenal. Oh yeah, it is strong. Thyme. It's like spicy strong. It's really strong. Just so, a little bit. Just a all, little all bit. You, all, all you, you, you people who use herbs, mm -hmm. anybody know, use thyme? Yes. Come here. I want you to t be very careful, take a very small piece because it's going to blow you away at how potent it is. But I, I, so, I want you to see the incredible power of wood chips, how they make, how they make food taste. Wow. You see how strong that is? Yeah, yeah. No time you've ever bought is like that. And the oregano as well. Oh, wow, this is 
do you see you see these strawberries here? Look! 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 Look how they look! I mean, look! Look at that color! Is it, it's just I I, I, mean, I just you know I, having garden for sixty five years. A, it, yeah, mole trap there! Don't step on it. Um, it's just I get so um, impressed with the density of color and how healthy th plants are. If you find a big white one, when they get white, they're like a, straw, a pineapple or um, strawberry. They're really good. Because basil likes it hot, and here it's not warm enough. Now, if you notice, my greenhouse has no roof. Oh, okay. It's a reason for that. I, I want you all to hear me about, about greenhouses. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Los Angeles in the 50s when we're in the sun a lot, and I sunburn all the time. Mm -hmm. Back in the 50s, skin cancer did not exist. Nobody had it. There was no such thing. Because back in the 50s, all tomatoes were growing outside in full sun. That's what people ate. Are you following me? They tested a sun-ripened tomato. It has 300 phytochemicals. The same tomato growing in a greenhouse has 50. 250 of the phytochemicals are lost with light going through glass because it interrupts photosynthesis. Today in Seattle, where there's no sun, people have skin cancer because the tomatoes aren't providing any protection. It's huge. It's totally huge. Yeah, and, and, and when does tomatoes get ripe? So here's, the, here's the genius of the Creator. When do tomatoes get ripe? Summer. In August, September, when the sun's the hottest. Because that's when you need them. And people are buying tomatoes in January with no flavor. It's stupid. Tomatoes are a nightshade. They're not good for you all year long. But it's so amazing to me when you look at nature, how everything, it comes in season for a reason. It's intentional. And how when we change things, we have no idea of the impact. So I'm getting this reality, and I was brain dead. I got this greenhouse. So God in His kindness sends this really strong wind and flipped my greenhouse over and broke four panes of glass. So I said, okay, I'll put it on these, that won't happen again. And I'm on my way to the glass, and I heard, excuse me. That was intentional. Don't put the glass back in the roof. If you have a greenhouse, have the top open so you get direct sunlight on your food so you get nutrient density. Duh! So if you have greenhouses, take the roof off. Get, get direct sunlight because otherwise the food is no, the quality is no good. Now I want to I want to demonstrate well, this. If you're going to get a hard freeze, would you put the top on it just to... No, I don't care about fr hard freeze. It's just if you get a hard... Here's the thing about hard freeze. Hard freeze only affects plants that are weak. If you notice in nature, all the plants that were, that were seeded last fall come up on the ground long before the last frost. And when the frost happens, they don't die because they're healthy. Hard freezes only affect gardeners who have lousy soil. It's all about health. When you're healthy, you resist hardships. So this is just holding in some of the heat. What this does is knocks, knocks, knocks off the wind and so the heat's just contained in there, and so the, the, the base goes really well. It's just a warmer spot. But I get direct sunlight, I get, I get good rain through the roof. Now, the, I want to show my friends this amazing tool so you all can watch. This has so changed my life in weeding. I'm telling you, man, you know, and we're talking like 65 years. And then Nick had, Nick had this tool, and one day he, he had me use it, and I was just blown away. So I want you to watch how incredibly effective this, this tool is. See, we got some, some weeds here. It's like a whole bunch right there. Watch this. I'll just, I'll just do these, these first two. I'm just coming underneath it, and, and then you flip it over, and the back becomes a rake, mm -hmm. and you grade. You see how fast that was? Let me do this, do this whole bunch over here. I mean, this is awesome. Can I step in here? You can step anywhere you want, yeah. Whoa! It's soft. <laughs> the ground, you could dig down to your elbow on that stuff. Now, now look, look at here where, where we've got all this, all this density. Is that awesome? That is so 
Is that incredible? I was just like, God, it is so cool, man. I love this. I love and this. Just mix it in. Why well, don't you mix it in? I'll just, I'll just, I'll just take my rake, mm -hmm. grate it out, yeah. and let the sun mm -hmm. dehydrate it, mm -hmm. okay. and turn it back to soil. But it's just, again, this is, this is one, the advantage of wood chips. You see how easy they move? Yes. And then yeah. having the right tool. It's just, yeah. you can make it, make it grow, um, so easy. Mm -hmm. Now for you, look what's behind you. That's wasabi. Oh, this one. Yeah, isn't that awesome? Yeah. If, it, the, if, if, you, if you like hot, Eat, 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 the, eat the foliage. The foliage is not as hot as the root, but it's really, it's really, th and, in a, and in a green salad, it really makes your salad awesome. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> mm, try the that was so good. Isn't that good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, go get some wasabi. Yeah, just, just get a, get a, get a good, good, good big leaf. And, and, and just like a, in a green salad, it really spices it up. It's really, really awesome. And what I'm so enjoying is you can see this is growing in full sun with no water, which is completely against what they tell you. Do you take out the root and use No, I'm just, I'm just enjoying that I can grow it. Oh, really? Just because nobody, you know, and you know why, you know, what, you know what growers get in U.S. for wasabi? $120 a pound. $120 bucks a pound. You know why? They're all growing hydroponically because no one knows that you can do it in, in wood chips. They all do it hydroponically in standing water in full shade. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was a plant. It's awesome. Was wasabi growing in Oregon. Uh, was, yeah. They, so they, mm -hmm. they charge a lot of money. 120 bucks a pound. That's huge. Wow. But this, th these are the things that just is so blowing me away about the nature of the God. He made things so easy. This is not hard. Carol. Was, Carol? Oh, I was going to ask Carol. Oh, Carol. Oh. I, um, you remember the, 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 the I'm just trying to think of well, this is an herb and I can't think of the name of it right now. Nick, see you, you know what this what this herb is here? Yarrow, yarrow okay. That's yarrow. yarrow. Is that edible? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is what's the medicinal value of uh, I'm just because it has medicinal purpose. It has wound care properties. I use it in salve. What's that? I use it in salve. Uh huh, yeah. What's it good for? Mm -hmm. yarrow. Now I want you to, to focus on my blueberries. Yeah, they're One, how open they are, and then look how dense the blueberries are developing on there. So you prune them so the branches are really wide and... Everything open. Here, here, here's, here's the reality of pruning. Light and air should get to everything. You, are you following me? Yes. Nothing should be shaded or crowded. Everything has to have its space. It's, it's so simple. You know, so you did prune these. I prune the heck out. I prune these things heavy every year. You know, and you look at the volume. Look at all those berries. Yes. It's incredible. Beautiful. Oh, and they're so good. And blueberries are really good for you. So, does anybody have chickens? Yes. Not yet. You, the, you, these, but you know, if, if you go, if you go to a, chi a typical chicken pen, mm -hmm. there's an odor. Mm -hmm. I want you to, and then when you go to a chicken pen. The chickens run up to you because they're hungry. I want you to approach my chicken pen and watch two things. One, there's an odor, and the chickens will totally ignore you because they're not hungry. Really? Because I want, I want you to get the, that odor is not, not natural, and nature is no odor. Odor only happens when you have cons, cons, condensed animals in a small space and concentrated manure. Unhealthy environment. Unhealthy environment. It's, so you keep it clean and you... I don't do anything. I just throw yard waste in there and the chickens spread it all over the place. You can't even find the manure in there. It's so spread out. Okay. Because I, I give them plenty to eat. Okay. So what's the difference between the field chickens and the laying hens? Those in the field are meat chickens. He's going he's gonna to raise... He's raising those for meat. He's going he's gonna to process them and sell, and sell the meat. So they don't lay any eggs? No, because they grow fast. Okay. These, these, these are all lay eggs over here. Okay. And I have them... You see, this is, this is my, my yard waste control. I throw nothing away. See, all my weeds, all my prunings, all mm -hmm. go in the chicken pen. They eat what they want, and the rest I just burn and make, make ashes out of it, which is, which is the most fertile soil in the world. You know, wood ash has the highest mineral content of anything on the planet. Do you know that? Wood ash. And here's why. See, when fire goes through wood, mm -hmm. everything's burned and consumed except minerals. Mm -hmm. That's all that's left. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever seen where, where a fire goes through a place, what comes back is totally green because of the high mineral content that got left. 
And so I take all my yard waste and bring it in there, and whatever the chickens don't eat, I burn and just create ashes. And, and I, I spread that around? Yeah, and, I, and then I, I heat with wood my house, and I take those ashes and spread all over my garden orchard because it's such mineral-rich material. What about coffee grounds? I'm thinking everything organic, anything that God created is fine. Because the compost, here's, here's, a, here's a scripture from dust we came from dust return. turn. Everything that God created turns back to dirt. It's such a beautiful principle. Nothing's wasted. There's no waste. Everything turns back to dirt. It's just such a perfect recycling program, you know. And again, it's just, it's just you know, it's really, really thoughtful. Okay, we can come out here and you can check out my chicken pen. Couple times. <laughs> you see, you see how the chickens totally ignore you. They're, they're, they're not hungry, and you and you notice there's no smell there. What's that? Nope. Now, I want to show you something interesting I did with my fig trees. You see the one under my willow tree there? Right in front of you? Yeah. You know why it's there? That extends my, my fig harvest. Because all the rest in full sun get ripe earlier because that's in shade that's really set back a while. And so I get a longer harvest. Well, look at them all. Look, look, at, the, look, look at the branches. A lot of figs, and it's a small tree. Oh, yeah. the soil I, is so good in here. It's so good. That soil is awesome in here. Because it was done, oh. and it grows back. See, by by putting it all off, I'll get a whole other crop now. Oh, I have, in Squim, I have the most amazing rhubarb plant. It's so huge. I've never seen one so big. Now, that nub, could you make a point to, to photograph, get a good picture of, of this garlic? Because um, Karina, my friend in Connecticut, wants this. This is her garlic she gave to me, and she wanted to see, because hers isn't, isn't even close to this big. Now, Karina, um, that nub's taking a picture of this, of this um, your garlic here, because I wanted you to see it. Garlic? Yeah. Oh, I thought he was bleak. No, that's garlic. Look at the look at the size of that stuff. They're huge. Wow. A friend, a friend of mine of in Connect gave me gave me some garlic and I planted it, and it's just awesome. It's it's a it's a French variety that's supposed to be like a real real delic delicacy, like a really special one, you know. And uh, how big is the ball? They get to be about this big. See, I won't harvest that till August, so it's still, still got a ways to go. Mm -hmm. And see, I, I cut all the all, all the scapes out of it. You can see they're they're growing back because yeah. it just, it just doesn't, wants to stop, doesn't want to doesn't want to quit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now break that. That is amazing to eat. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. Break break it off of the base, and when you take take that home, cut it up, and put it in your food. Mm -hmm. It's like having total awesome garlic. It's just mm -hmm. so good. Okay. We'll smell the end of it. You'll see. It's like mm -hmm. potent, man. It's potent. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so good. <laughs> so flavorful. And Again, nutrient is density it? is awesome. It's oh, just, it's okay. just, just yeah. <laughs> it's a real, it's real garlic. Yeah. <laughs> and my breath is going to be fabulous. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not put off. I, I like garlic. The, 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 it does. It's, it's a nice flavor. Nice, nice odor. I'm not put off by garlic. That's amazing. You don't like. Garlic? That is really good. You know what's amazing about garlic? Garlic is an antibiotic. Mm -hmm. It's an antihistamine. It's an antifungal. It does everything. It's the most potent, healthy food on the planet. I mean, it is really an amazing, amazing food. Garlic and honey. You can look for it. 
I have a question about that Good. oven in the back. Did you like that? We went to the outhouse. Is that I've been a, wanting to build one. That is a cool pizza oven, man. Do you use that for like baking bread? Oh, we we, we do bread. We do pizza. Pizzas are awesome. Well, obviously, yeah. You know, yeah, we we love that thing. Yeah, that's a good oven. That's and there's cool. nothing nothing like stuff cooked outside like that. It's just there's no comparison to flavor. Well, it's so much hotter. That's what hotter I hotter and the, and the, yeah, it's just it's just again, it's just like poof, it's right there. I mean, you put that thing on, you got to flip it because it's it's done now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm jealous of your oven. I've been talking to my husband about building one in the backyard. Yeah, and me. Yeah, him too. Yeah. Did you see the catio? Yes. I did, and isn't, I want to build she one. Wants one so isn't, isn't that a cool catio? It man? Is. Those cats haven't made it. She's <laughs> been like talking it. about that forever. Well, as soon as we got a cat. Yeah, yeah. we've only had a cat for a year. Mm -hmm. but, um, he's just, it's prison for him to be in the house. I know. So. And they, they spend all day out there. They love it. They just totally love being outside. You need is a tunnel from the catio into the house. Is that? Did it's, you see that? There's a, 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 a total um, bridge. Oh, I didn't see it's that. There's a complete bridge from yeah. the house. The house oh, thing. I missed that. Yeah, you see it right on top. Big, big, big bridge. What's that? The catio with, oh. with the bridge. We were admiring your backyard when we went back to the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of plain, but it's worse. I don't know. It's not no, it's fun. lovely. Yeah. And I really want one of those pizza ovens. So. <laughs> Do you bake bread in it? I haven't yet, but I need to. I haven't used it to its fullest. I've just been doing pizza, and i got to gear up for it. I, up until this year, I was traveling a lot, too, too. Yeah. Oh. until COVID, so I really have to get more focused on home. We don't want to put our, turn our oven on, you know. Our oh, living area oven. windows are all westward facing, so it gets really hot. Uh, mm. Yeah, our house is. It was God that put it there. <laughs> <laughs> really but you guys, you know what you should do? If you do a garden, you should do herbs and, and make it a food for us so you can utilize everything. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of Your garlic is impressive. Yeah. Are, are you going to harvest it too soon? August. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say they probably need to be. Somebody was asking me today, are you harvesting your garlic yet? And I said, I don't know, I don't think I'm going to Yeah, I usually wait till, till August. But everything's, you know, this, this this stuff grew so much faster this year, you know, so I may, I may be, you know, doing it sooner. How long does the August, uh, do the, does the garlic last, like you? Oh, we have we have garlic that we harvested I last. I have that garlic underneath the wood stove is still good. Good, yeah. I'm still using yeah, it. Was, but you have to figure out a almost place. Almost the whole year if you put, if you keep it in a good place, you know. And cool I, so read up on how to cool store garlic. Yeah. yeah, but again, it's just you know it's so good for you, and it's just you know I, I grow a lot. Of, I have a place in school. I grow quite a bit, and because it's just so you know, and I I can eat it and everything. I just I love garlic. You guys don't have any kind of a natural cellar, natural food storage anywhere. Well, yeah, the, uh, he told me you have a big refrigerator, but yeah, yeah, you can you can do like um, there's a lot of things you can do. Like you could do a we don't have. You know, the water table gets weird here because it's clay. So you can't really put anything under the house for storage here. But, you know, different wherever you live. But there, you know, there's lots of things you can do. Build a side room and put in a freezer that, without the door, and that'll keep it cool, dark, and dry. That's, that's really, really important. In your food storage, you want a freezer without the door. Because, you know, frost-free freezers is, a, is the most dumb thing they ever did for us because it dehydrates all your food. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you if you set it in a in a building, you want air, want it dry. You open the door, it pulls all the moisture out of the air, right. and keeps it really dry in there. It's amazing how it works. But it's running the whole <laughs> it's time. Running. No, no, I, I have I have mine come on three times a day for 15 minutes. Oh. Okay. And that room stays totally clean. I have all kinds of dry. I have all kinds of food in there. The store is amazing. <laughs> oh, interesting. We, we, how big is the room? Terry has. It's um 16 by 20. Oh, so that's a good sized room. Mm -hmm. Huh? So it's almost like having a cellar. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the downstairs of, a, of that building back there. It's a, it's a guest house in the downstairs area we have. Huh. Yeah, I'm not going to have that much room. No, but, but how we f want to care, this lady who really does dry, dry, really in dry foods over, over in Seattle, and went into this room of hers, had all this dry, and she had this refrigerator with the door off. And I'm asking her, what's up with that? Well, that's getting all, all the moisture out. 
And she explained to me how, and, and I did that. And it's just uh, phenomenal how it works because I could never keep onions or garlic, you know. It, it was just, but it's just amazing how that gets all the moisture out. So all you need is a dark room with a freezer that comes on for a few minutes a day yeah. to suck all the well, moisture out. Well, that's what yeah. a dehydrator is. It's just a refrigerating coil. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. But again, again so you're you're not dehydrated. But, but see, you're ideally, ideally, you shouldn't have a refrigerator that's frost free because that sucks all the moisture out of your food. You should have a refrigerator right. freezer that ha has ice. That's the best. But mm -hmm. they make the funky ones, and you can use that to, to get all the, all the moisture out of your air. Oh, okay. So you want one of those. Sorry. That's what we have in the garage. Yeah, most of the new ones. You, are, I have my I have one one into. But again, if, if, you, if you're a hunter and, and, you, and, you, and you do animals and you put your, your, your stuff in that freezer, it's dehydrated. It's not good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It sucks all the moisture out. I mean, our, ref our freezers don't defrost, but it's still over time is going to dehydrate it just the co off and on, just from opening the door. Maybe, but it, I build up quite a bit of ice in my freezer. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, 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 now you just chip it all out of there. There's no problem. You know, it's, it's something you do. You know. But yeah, that's so pretty when I clean it out. <laughs> Immediately. Start from there. That's because you start, if you open the door, every time you open the door, humidity gets in there and it freezes. Mm -hmm. Then that's the dehumid, that's the... Yeah, and again, in western Washington, it's a, you know, it's, it's a damp area. Humid, you know. Yeah. It's not humid, it's just damp. It's not really humid here. No, it you get you get back right. back in the Midwest, and, yeah. and, and yeah. it, that's humid. Here. This is not humid. I saw a plastic cellar kind of situation. Like uh, I saw an advertisement for it, probably because I've been looking at so many gardening sites, um, where you you can either dig it in or you can just cover it, and it supposedly acts like a cellar, like cool. a refrigerator. Well, you know the soil. Is a really great place because it maintains 45 degrees year, right. year round. That's, see, that's and so, so if you can, if you have like a mound, you can build into a hillside. Mm -hmm. And back in the day, people had root cellars. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's where they, what they were. Mean, they were yeah. in the ground mm -hmm. because they maintained 45 degrees. And that's what this plastic thing would be. You yeah. just dig out a hole and shove it from in the there. ground. Yeah. And it has stairs. Mm -hmm. That's why that alone cool. in the wilderness guy dug a hole. Yeah. Have you read the Egg and I? Mm -hmm. It's an old, old book. But <coughs> well, the Egg and I. It's actually over here in, I know. is the road, yeah. Egg and I. Oh, well, it's because their farm was here. Yeah. And a lot of the book is about their farming. Yeah. Like, it's got nothing oh, yeah. to do this with the movie. That's the, the Egg and I. Was, the movie was the Egg and I. Was Claudette Colbert. I thought that was the Egg and I. No. no? Egg and, the egg and I. And, and, and again, Ball. again, it, it, oh. it happened, it happened <laughs> right over here. I Claudette Colbert yeah. movie. But they were right over here. But it, the book is way different than the movie. Mm -hmm. But it, it had a lot most, of... Most books um, are different than the movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, they just focused on their farming and mm -hmm. stuff. And they were like... I always remembered the way that they stored their cellar. <laughs> was they harvested it. And then they laid it out and threw the ground back over it. Mm -hmm. And just kept it in the ground and pulled it up as they needed yeah. it. Because otherwise it got bitter. Actually, my, my, my root vegetables in the winter are far sweeter than the ones in the summer. Because when the ground freezes, the sugar comes up. And they're much better tasting. Much better winter. Winter. My carrots and beets are awesome in the winter time. When do you harvest a dog? All, all winter long. You see the the beauty the beauty of having in the ground. It's still live food. They're not growing, but they're live. And so you can pull them out whenever you want them. It's live food. What, what, what's that? No, no. I I plant like you know August. I want them full size. Get it really big. So I get really you know good good good, good mature. So like see, see all those carrots over there. Aren't those nice looking carrots? Yeah, they are. And, and you can pull one just to see how, see how good they taste. They're really good. good. So those ones are from last No, I, I planted them in the spring, but go pull and see how good they are. They're, they're good carrots. When do you plant carrots? Like January. No, not, I mean, April. April? April. Now, before you eat it, run it by your nose, because I want you to, to, see, to learn, see something awesome. You see, once once vegetables are, p are picked, in 10 minutes, they lose up to 80% of metabolic properties. When you buy organic carrots in the store, they don't have any odor because something's lost. And you shouldn't rub the dirt off. You should eat that because that's, that's high minerals. I'm serious. Not bad, huh? They're supposed to be. <laughs> now the tops, just give them the chickens. So good. Okay, 
came right out. Well, it's supposed to. <laughs> so easy. That's what I love about the wood chips. I mean, it just makes everything so easy. Mm -hmm. It's just how it's, I mean, you get like, this is how it's supposed to be. And All this hard, hard stuff was not intentional. I don't mind the dirt either. It's not, not even dirt. No? It's, it's wood chips. It doesn't taste like or, or... It's minerals. It's, it's like... Because it, the carrot overpowers the flavor. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't even have that grainy no. texture. Well, it's, it's not dirt. It's wood chips. Wood chips, but... Well, this is awesome. Isn't that a great tool? I tell you, it makes your weeding just go so fast. Oh, I can't believe so it. So where did you, where do you get Never them? Sink farm tools? Never? Yeah, Never Sink. Okay. S I N K. We'll have to have you write it on your back of your card. I thought you were going to say the back of my head or something. <laughs> well, my number's on there. Text me. Okay. And I'll just send you the link. Yeah, it's just, it's so nice. You know, and, and again, just, you, uh, you can use it for grading. It just, man, it makes your work so cool. You know? And you know, uh, and the thing, I can we stay on top of it when they're little, mm. it's so much easier than when they get big and you have all this mass to get out of there, you know, so. And you waste your dirt. Yeah, and again, it's just, it's just, it's, it's just co convenient as can be. Yeah. Well, they say, like with the thistles, if you keep them cut, it'll finally kill them uh -huh. because they get no, the roots aren't fed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I just can't keep. Well, do you remember when I came here, my, my whole field was full of thistles. Right. Mm. Look out there now. Right. There's not I one. But I was, but, but I'll tell you what it was. It's called tenacious diligence. I went out there with my four, my four inch shovel and I dug those things out every time I saw them. Mm -hmm. if I, and if it flowered, I couldn't get it. I, I chopped it off at the, at the base, you know. And I just was consistent. I just totally, I'm not going to put up with you. You're not going to be here, you know. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking, man, I just, there's nothing, there's not a fish in the whole field. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, if yeah. they're, they were there, you'd see them. They're, they're, they're pretty visible. Well, yeah, when you clear a spot, the thistles come out. I know. All these. I think the difference at our place is that sand mm -hmm. and those thistle roots can go, go for, forever. six, eight feet yeah. down, mm -hmm. and you just forever. can't get them out. I mean, I've dug and yeah. dug and dug. Yeah, this, and is, spray. this is a heavy clay. It's, it's a pretty heavy clay, so they don't, they don't get that deep. Yeah. In April. In April, mm -hmm. and then you plant again in August. Or I'll, 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 yeah, probably first of August. Yeah, for like, for for winter crop. Because you want you, you you want your stuff to get full size. See, it's not right. gonna, not going to grow during the winter, mm -hmm. but it'll get to be full size and it stays on the ground live. Mm -hmm. And actually, when the ground freezes, they get much sweeter. The, the sweet the really? sweetness. Oh, I'm telling you, the yeah. the freeze. Is delicious. No, it, it's it's superior in the winter. Amazing difference. Just like that. Dirt don't hurt. It's not even dirt. Those are wood chips. Good for you. It's called minerals. You're taking away minerals from yourself. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! I can't help you microbiome it. You know, listen. Your gut. What, what, my wife, Carol's, Carol's a midwife, and one of one of her clients is bringing her. Says, I, I can't keep my kid from eating dirt, and Carol says he needs minerals. He's hung, he's he's missing, and he knows where to get them. Mm. The kid's eating dirt because he needs minerals. That's that delicious. Because he didn't. He's not getting it in his food. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We, 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 were, we were kids. We were always out in the dirt eating it. You know, we just were always in the dirt. I didn't you, know. You, but you get, it got in your mouth. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, it's, it's yeah, just your you're, you're, right. everything. You're just, you're just eating. Well, yeah, eat. washing your hands wasn't yeah. well, not only that, that whole antibacterial crap. You know how many diseases we didn't get because our hands were always dirty? Yeah. It's just, you, again, it's just, you know, this, this sterile mentality is just, it's, it's, it's unhealthy. <laughs> So you can't eat carrot tops? You can. What do you do with them? They're well, tough. They're good. They're juiced. Mm -hmm. juice them. If you're hungry, you eat everything. <laughs> yeah, graze. Hmm? Come out and graze. Well, hungry. like beet well, tops. He's, he's like, eat Those the whole plant. <laughs> beet tops well, taste everything good. in nature does, you know. Rhubarb, you're not to eat yeah, those, those are... Those are, it's interesting how, how the animals know it. Like, those chickens aren't going to eat that rhubarb. Yeah. They won't touch it. They, they know. Wow. <laughs> that is, 
drink That's time, good. nothing to it, do. There's no other explanation. I love. I, I tell people, God is so fun to work with. Let's make it good. God is fun to work with. The shelves are empty. He's awesome. The grocery stores. There was that. that, yeah. And everybody was buying chickens. Everybody was buying, you know, yeah. hey, we're going to have to start growing our food. A lot of people have wanted food. to buy chickens anyway because of the yeah. egg industry. But, right. like, in Issaquah, you, you can only have four. Mm. Um Inside city limits, you can't have a rooster, but right. um, but you can have four hens. But my age, wait. Tell them what you did. Right. Well, my town, I grew up in a little redneck town in Maryland, mm -hmm. and like the town over a hundred years ago was based on their poultry industry, mm -hmm. and there was no regulation saying I couldn't have chickens, and so I got myself some chickens, and I had four of them, mm -hmm. and then some dude had like 20 of them in city limits and some his, he didn't like his neighbor and his neighbor didn't like him so they just went back and forth kept complaining mm -hmm. then the town council stepped in and sent everybody in town a letter they had no idea i had chickens right and saying if you have chickens you'll be fined a thousand dollars per day per violation until you get rid of them and i was like no wait a second you can't I, one i had read every ordinance in the thing right. before i got my chickens right and i was only I was 15 and so they sent that and I was like no <laughs> like you can't do that there's nothing saying I can't have my chickens mm -hmm. I loved my chickens they're my four little pets mm -hmm. and so I ran a petition it was uh, the month before my senior no when was that I don't know I ran a petition before school started hit every door in the town to limits um, got uh, couple hundred signatures on the one um, on paper and then I did an online petition got over a couple thousand and then was at every single town meeting for over a year and it was me against the whole town council mm -hmm. and their two attorneys and I had the um, governor of Maryland came out to support me I had um, oh, well. at the time I was the president of the county FFA chapter and I was really good friends with the entire state FFA um, chapter mm -hmm. and or advisors and everybody. And he's 15. And right. They all came out and supported me and <coughs> like I fought the entire town for a year every single Monday or every first Monday oh of the month goodness. and I won. And that was all because some guy had 20 this chickens. Is, yeah, this is because all and didn't it's have anything poorly to managed yeah. and they had yeah. no idea I had them. I probably could have kept keeping them, but yeah. I don't. I put my but foot that, down. That is a but problem when people funny. poorly manage it because yeah. a friend of mine's name. She, they put up a chicken house and. My friend had lived there for over 20 years, and they've never had a rodent problem. Yeah, and but all when of you a sudden they a had a one. big rat problem. Oh, all like, about maintenance. Yeah, because yep. somebody didn't know what the heck they were doing. Yep. Clean. How does so you... what's the funny thing about the story is I fought for a year, won, made up this whole long ordinance just to make them happy, and um, after all that, then they're like, "Well, your st your property still doesn't qualify to have chickens." I'm like, "Yeah, okay, not after all that. <laughs> like, mine's gonna be grandfathered in. I don't care." So, anyways, I got to keep my chickens, and then a month after it passed, I moved. <laughs> so I was just like, "Fine." And then I got. Um, but the next guy got to keep his. Yeah. Chickens. <laughs> now everybody in town, because of me, get, is legally allowed to have chickens. Oh, and it's the funniest thing. I had HOAs people... are a little different. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. like yeah, I, when I was president of the HOA, I got yeah. calls from a lady that said, the next door neighbor has chickens, and it's attracting this coyote, and I have little kids, mm -hmm. and like, mm. there's rabbits everywhere. You know, So I just sent out a notice, you're not allowed to have chickens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's different That's with the HOA. As far as I was going to go. Yeah, don't live there. <laughs> yeah. But it was... Cougars before we had chickens. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a bobcat. Yeah, that's in true. We got a bobcat. We got yeah. some some coyotes and a bazillion rabbits. Mm -hmm. That's true. So yeah. the I cat mean, comes in with rabbits all the time. <laughs> that's when yeah. the cat does not go out in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> and the dog goes out and takes them away from him. Yeah, <laughs> eats them. Oh, so burned. my dog had a, came yep. back up to me with a rabbit one day. A small rabbit. Yeah. Like, Gosh, dang it! <laughs> Killed it. And so I. Up. And I put it on top of my car so the dog couldn't get to it, and I kind of forgot about it. Oh. And I forgot. I went somewhere in my car, and I thought, holy crap, yeah, I was probably driving down Highway 900, and somebody <laughs> behind me got an ugly surprise. Well, I really appreciate you putting all this out there for us to learn from. You're welcome. It's my first year, so my, my expectations are kind of low, but... I'm going to keep working on it. Well, again, it's just the thing. You'll see, you'll see every year it gets better. You know, and, and you always are learning. You know, and, and, and here, you know, your mistakes are, are a good learning experience. You won't do that again. Right, you know? right. And so it's just, it's all good. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I put about 12 to 
14 inches of chips on the garden. That didn't work out so well. Mm, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot when you're trying to get down to the soil. soil. Was, no, Look at nature. Not really any, like in an orchard, it's okay if you're just trying to build your soil yeah. really quick, but nowhere in nature does that yeah. much of any work. It's just always thin. Hit the ground. Mm -hmm. It's always a thin layer over time. Right. So yep. just keep that Continuous. Build a lasagna. Yeah. Throughout so the summer, take time. put a thin layer of wood chips in the fall. In the summer, when you cut your grass, rake all your grass clippings or bag it if your lawnmower does that. Mm -hmm. Put that on the garden. That's your summer ground cover. In the fall, put mm -hmm. chips. And then you're balancing the nitrogen and carbon ratio. And so now really that awesome. I've put my four inches, I don't have to do that again. I can just do smaller amounts. Yeah. 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 Okay. You don't ever, yeah, you're just trying to build your soil really quick. Mm -hmm. But your soil is probably hungry, so four inches isn't going to last. Not, it'll, it'll I noticed that yeah. the first batch that I put on mm -hmm. it, it settles. It settles. Yeah. Yeah. Four inches fresh. And when I go inches. down into it, I can see dirt already. Mm -hmm. like yeah. It's turning mm -hmm. to dirt really fast. And, it's, and, it's, and the dirt's nice. You're like, wow, yeah. this is yeah. it's, it's changing. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's not four inches down where I put no. it. It's you know, an inch and a half yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> There's dirt. So. Yeah, composting is, compost is an amazing principle. Mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome. Leaves in the fall or in the leaves if you if you want worms nothing will bring worms in more than leaves leaves are amazing for bringing worm worm population huh. it's huge but look around here you're not gonna get many leaves you get the apples yeah. and they just blow away but if you have, well, we got a maple if you got a, yeah, a, 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 the maple those maple leaves like are, are really are good incredible you don't get i mean mm. worms are just one thing but then you've got all the stuff that you can't even see with your naked eye yeah. that comes in because of the leaves well i noticed when i was so so that's good for I mean, fall yeah. compost too. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that wood pile sure. that sat, as I was digging, first of all, it was hot by the time I was really getting into the center of it. And it's it was steaming. Cloud, yeah. yeah, it was steaming. Oh, yeah. I couldn't tell if it was smoke. I thought, is this thing going to catch on fire? No, this <laughs> compost, man, it gets hot. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the leaves had a lot of activity going on mm -hmm. that, with them. Mm -hmm. So this was, somebody took down a maple in their yard. Mm -hmm. Cool. So it was like oh. beautiful yeah. chipped maple. Swipe through this. This is a garden, the first year garden back in Maryland. I can't it... see anything. Okay. You can't see it? <laughs> you no. can't see anything. Oh, okay. Read your sunglasses. Oh. Yeah, okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I can. You can swipe through it. And that's all within a year. Not even a full year. And you can see the progress. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, I'm not going to get this. But you know what? I'm just going to keep working at it until I get it. Yeah. You know what? You will get it. Eventually. Oh, death and life <laughs> are in the power of the tongue. <laughs> That's right. Eventually, I will get it. I'll keep plugging away. I mean, last year I planted a few things, and I was pleasantly surprised. The sugar snap peas were amazing. But I'm the one that call, that wrote to you about the raised garden. The okay. raised bed. Mm -hmm. And so I had a plant to put big raised beds out there until you blew that out of the water. Before. Well, here's a, see, raised beds, because they're above grade, the air totally sucks all the water out. Yeah. You got to water like crazy, man. Yeah. It takes so much water. So know. now I have to do it on the ground. <laughs> well, it's just, <laughs> just build it up. <laughs> raise, ra well, raise, yeah. raise the grade. Yeah. <laughs> what happens if your ground, like, okay, so I was talking to you about building in Hawaii. I mean, because that's lava rock under there. It's rock so... bottom is the best foundation to build yeah, but, up on. It's so porous, isn't it? Isn't the it's water going to just go that. right out the bottom? It's good. No? With port lava rock is incredible. Like, if I could get lava rock here, I'd be throwing lava rock gravel down. But that's it's lava so rock gravel. This is actual... It's still good. Flowed lava. Still good. It's okay? Yeah, still it's good. It's not going to drain out on me? No, you'll be fine. All right. Yep. Not good. that Kona get that much. Lava rock Kona doesn't so get much water. Porous, it's like, it's like a hotel for microbiology. Oh, really? So yeah. all of your um, bacteria and stuff colonize in all of those pores, and they'll close it up, and they'll be living in there, and then they'll go into your soil, and slowly, like, the bacteria... Um, release acids that break down your lava rock and they just make it even better and turn that into soil which is just pure minerals and mm. so yeah lava rock's incredible well you know what's interesting about interesting about you know how, how we take rocks out of our gardens mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you ever drive along the, the mountain passes and you look along the road at these bright green fir pine hemlock growing out of solid rock mm -hmm. excuse me and we're taking rocks out of rocks are minerals duh it's just so bizarre how we just don't think. <laughs> no, hmm. no yeah. I was just concerned about water holding in there. Mm. Right. Well, you know, how, you know how the Creator maintains water on, on, on rock surfaces in the mountains? 
He uses slow, slow drip irrigation called snow. <laughs> I love that. It's slow drip irrigation. That's what snow is. Yeah. It's so awesome. What a great design. <laughs> Never thought of that. Can I go back to the the drip irrigation? You yeah. briefly you don't you don't like it? No. Or how come? Because um, it doesn't get the whole root mass. You see, you have a emitter right here, and roots way out over there. It doesn't get water, so it doesn't cover the whole space. So how do you water in the spring? In the spring, overhead. Overhead. How does God water everything? Rain. Okay. Overhead. So overhead. It, and if you do it in the sun, it's not going to hurt the plant. I'm always concerned about the sun. <coughs> Excuse me. It's uh, not, you saw me watering in full sun. I, did uh, I didn't, but, but okay. Oh, you didn't see it? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was happening. Yeah, when the tour started, I had the sprinkler going. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that was cool. So it crop. doesn't burn the plants? Not at all. Oh, not at all. Okay. Yeah, if I didn't do that, all my lettuce would bolt. So that water hitting the leaves like that cooled oh. it instantly, and the mm -hmm. plant was like, okay, I can make it a few more hours until the oh. sun goes down. <laughs> He's off. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I really You're welcome. appreciate it. Is the fruit stand open up front? Yeah, you can take whatever you want. Mm. Is there a donation it. box somewhere? There's Where do we put them under? Okay. Yeah. Thanks thank for you. coming out. Thank you. Thank you for answering all our questions. You're welcome. Yes. Yeah, it's nice in the shade. You know, I don't want to go out of it. Because <laughs> I'm standing <laughs> in the sun. <laughs> So you moved your wood pile closer. Yeah, well, the, the wood pile used to be where all the sequoias were. <laughs> you remember I had it all on the driveway there for years, you know. Right, and you had a whole bunch out. I still, I still have some out, out there. Do you? And what I have, have uh, um, it really makes a difference to my grapes. The wood is like a heat sink. Right. And the grapes do so much better having that wood behind them, you know, because it keeps it warmer. But uh, we put in a, we put in a, um, uh, Duckless heat pump, oh, and that that sh that tell you those things are mind-boggling how efficient they are. Blows yeah. my mind, man. It's just, and it's just changed changed my life. You know, I used to get up every morning at five o'clock to the stove going, and I get in the morning the house is warm. It's just, it's not the same heat. I pr you know, yeah. and, and many times Carol has prenatals where people come, we, we get the stove going because it's, it's the best heat. Yes. But um, it's and again cost-wise with, with the price of firewood, it's so much cheaper to run that heat pump because it's just. It's so efficient. efficient. Yeah, they're pretty popular. Well, they work. They're just, you know, and again, when you think about, you know, my neighbor over here, you know, he's got, he's got a heat pump that's all ducted. Mm -hmm. You lose so much heat through the duct system. Yeah. And having a ductless, everything is just right there. Yep. It's so much more efficient. You know, just... uh, yeah, Hannah, uh, the rental that they were at, the owner put one in, and I was really surprised at how... I mean, her house is old, mm -hmm. but it... It works. It, it worked great. And I couldn't believe how much, how little it costs electricity. Really? I it's wonder. Like, it's like 30 bucks, uh, you know, a month difference. I, I, have, I have actually, I'm running three of them. There's one back at, in the guest house mm -hmm. and two in the house. Oh. And it's only about 30 bucks difference. It's you only have two? Three. Well, I mean, in the house. Two in the house, yeah. Oh. One, in the, one, in the, one in the addition, one in the, one in the log house. And it t yeah. totally heats, whole, heats it up great. Yeah, they're just totally am amazing. Yeah. Huh. Jap oh, stupid sheep. Japanese. Uh -oh. They the they're in my greenhouse. oh no. Oh, don't go in there. <laughs> Livestock. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Always a challenge. See, we uh -huh. could go with the the forest, because all of our ducks run between the basement and the um, upstairs, uh -huh. so your heat's still in the house. Mm -hmm. That'd be better for the downstairs, though. It would the downstairs gets pretty cold. So. It would probably run a lot more than the furnace does. Oh, it's amazing how little it runs. I mean, it's just, the thing is so efficient. It's like... Oh totally like blew my mind because electric heat is not efficient no you know right well we're propane okay well this is but you well, know it's still yeah i, I mean, mean we're going through well we water we heat with water and cook and stuff too mm -hmm. propane but and a dryer no. uh no the dryer's electric yes yeah, our dryer's propane mm -hmm. we, have, we have propane dryer and hot water heater and stove yeah do you have the 
on demand hot water heater or do you have no, a tank? No, tank. Yeah. I put it on demand and I do not like it. Well, my experience was it was it's just the water coming out of is the well is so cold. It takes a lot of heat to well, get yeah. it up to get it That's get it hot. Yeah. You know, and it's just and it's just you don't have really hot water all the time. With that hot water heater, man, it's just like it's hot yeah. all the time, you know. And you have to have electricity to run it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the other one, the, the tank one, you don't. Yeah, just propane. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I, it, my propane hot water is great. I love it. Yeah. I've, and then and then and then your stove. I mean, the food is so much better with you know oh, propane so than, than electric. It's so much nicer. I, so much more control. You just everything just so. It's yeah, nothing like it. He got more. He he comes. Have your autograph on it. Sure. <laughs> I told her it's the only one worth anything, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, he gave me one. Yeah, well, that's not, <laughs> and yeah. That's just your one thing when they eat my plants, it's another when they take a bite of my oh. tomatoes. Oh, oh, no. That's sad. I have to take a bite out of that. Would you like me to hold it? No, I, I'll, I'll use the, um, I'll use the fencer. I have two eyes, but that doesn't work. Okay, if you've got my pen, I'll be happy to find it for you. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Bless you. Thank you. We'll get Paul's, too. Oh, you found it. Did you really? Yes. Are you going to want to drop that? Really? Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Did you find a pen he dropped? Yeah. Apparently. Oh, yes. cool. Good eye. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Nice meeting you. Bless you. Bless you too. Donate to the cause. There's a little can out there. You can go to the Okay. Take as much as you want. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's what he does. <laughs> so well. Toba. I didn't say Willow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me. There's do your pen. This. Don't let me get away yeah, with that. I've already lost one today. <laughs> until just now. And I got Paul's tool. Don't let me get away with that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll Paul, get. Paul will chase me down the <laughs> driveway. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> so. Oops. <laughs> that, I, w I need this tool. <laughs> We're friends, but not that good. Friends. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how do I spell Terry? T E R I. So glad I asked. Oh. So I showed him Tim Coe's name in it. I said, the only way to get your name in the book is if you buy one and I write it down, like right here. <laughs> <Howard and Barry. laughs> right. So now it's in the book. Finally. Right. We paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Yeah. We'll have the master sign it too, so we have his signature. Yeah, wherever, wherever you, wherever you want to sign it. Okay. Where do you want to sign it, Paul? Oh, I don't care. Wherever you want me to. <laughs> How about right under your picture? Okay. Terry picks up her own kill. <laughs> I have been known to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I haven't done that for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a cat girl rather than that. Oh my gosh. It had been living in the yard. So I put that in the freezer for oh, the week. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. We got it the other day.
They're great because yeah, I think she'd be really so good lean. Lean. Oh, yeah. The wild ones yeah. are so lean. Yeah. You don't have to do Did you get your umbrella? Anything. Yeah, they, they, did, they just uploaded them out there. Nice. Well, and then they graze too, don't they? What? The dogs eat some yeah, oh, yeah. cucumbers and stuff. Yeah, she's weird though. She doesn't like vegetables. Yeah, some don't. She eats apples though. Oh, does she? She eats carrots, so I, 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 I yeah. see. Really? Mm -hmm. My dog doesn't care for apples too much, but those are store bought. So. And they eat the, and, he, and he, they really like the pears. Oh, the oh. pears! I think those are the favorite. Yeah, they love pears, man. Yeah. I think our dog can climb the tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, he, he. He's out there before they're even. Oh, he half eats them when they're, right. when they're little. Wow. They start eating them. Yeah. You know, they're green and hard and. Well, we should mosey, huh? Yeah. It's well, thanks for coming. It's so good to see you. I oh. know. This is <laughs> such a treat. I've always wanted to come. We got here. We got the... I know. This was like the got perfect day. the first day. book. Yeah. Oh, one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So will he be putting this on YouTube? Do Eventually. Yeah. yeah. It takes him a while to get it out there. I'm sure. He, does, he has to do all the editing. Editing. Yeah, he's and got how many cameras to edit? And then, and then he, does, he, does, he does like small sections, you know. Um, yeah. A lot of the stuff that's coming out is like a year or two old, though. Mm -hmm. So he's like trying to keep it and just like push it spread back. It, spread it out. Using it. Well, I watch your stuff. Oh, yeah? When I see it. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I learned about that. Oh really? Okay, cool. Recently, you had nice. one mm -hmm. on there that you convinced him to. Mm -hmm. it. <laughs> I laughed because. <laughs> you know how he I is. You know how he is. Just <laughs> <laughs> watch this. How stubborn you are. <laughs> <laughs> Creature of habit, you know. <laughs> right. Well, you, when you find something that works, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. awesome. I've got a big. Bowie knife mounted on a post, that, but you're always sideways trying to, you know, when yeah. you're down in the dirt uh -huh. trying to cut. Well, and it gets and it gets so dull, and it just it's like, and those thistles is just. Mm -hmm. It's awful. Yeah. All right. Well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> totally. <laughs> what are you talking about? Do so you have a, like a chicken tractor? Yeah, I've got chicken tractors. They're kind of along the um, fence by the road. I've got okay. some grow out chickens and turkeys in one, and then rabbits that are growing out on pasture. And then okay. um, all of my meat birds I do in an open paddock. I move that every, uh, depending on the grass growth, three to three days to a week. And then I do all my laying birds on pasture, and they get rotated every other week. So you just got a bigger paddock. Yeah. yeah and you got Boy, I just noticed today um, okay. the deer damage on my apples. We're gonna need need a mic out at night. Crap! Really? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, they just, they did some nibbling. Already. Hey, we'll get them out there. Yeah, he's this mic of man is off, but he's he's been in a chicken pen. But we gotta at, maybe during the day, but at night we need to have him out because. Well, the eagles yeah. have gone, so you can stay out. Yeah. Which tree? King David? King David, yeah. That's the first one they, they get. Always, go, always for go for that one, yeah. Mm. It's the first one. Dang. Yeah, it's been so great not, not having them. Well, they, a couple of years ago, they just completely defoliated my trees. Really? Made, ate every leaf off. It was oh crazy. It was totally crazy. There was, there was a few apples on the trees, but no leaves. They waited oh. for the apples to still ripen before and they the took them. And the tree home. survived. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Able to yeah. Survive. But just, yeah, it was oh. terrible. So I'm so thankful for that dog because it, it, it's made such a difference. <laughs> now, have you had to train him to he's, work? No, he's... They get it. They, they, they totally, yeah. they totally, it's like, well, it's, it's their breed. They're bred for that, but I didn't know if you had to kind of, you know... You needed to um, integrate them with the livestock and stuff to get them used okay. to it from the beginning. Like, 
Right. A lot of people have great Pyrenees that just want to kill every chicken they see, or yeah. they want to kill a sheep, or whatever. Um, so you just have to, from the beginning, get them involved with it, yeah. and then they'll learn, okay, i got to protect them because they're not protecting themselves, and they figure it out. And it's so interesting, like, little, little Willow will get in there and chase the sheep, and then Michael comes running around and just nails Willow, man. Like, don't do that. <laughs> Stand in front of Willow, just like, <laughs> like run right in there. He's just like a tank. He just <laughs> Yeah, they're great dogs. Mm -hmm. It's funny, he was crashed out under that tin thing and all the chickens are laying on top of him. Oh. Snuggling up with him. <laughs> yeah, I've seen pictures where the, the kid goat mm -hmm. is like standing on him and he's yeah. happy yeah, as can be. Yeah, some of the black chickens that are in there, they actually hop up and ride him. Oh my. <laughs> walk, he'll be walking around with two or three chickens on his back, back. not even caring. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, That's funny. That's great. Well, bless you. Bless you. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Always yeah. Is. Glad we get to see Carol, too. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I've you seen too. you on, yeah. you know, internet and stuff. Yeah. And just so you know, if you read that, I have nothing to do with Baker Creek. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's in there. Mistake. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Baker Creek. I've heard of that. What is it's, that? They're, they're a sea company. Yeah. And, and I, think they're real, I think they're believers, but... Their seed quality is just not good. Yeah. Real, real, poor, real, real poor germination. It's sad. Well, yeah, I, I think there was a video that you talked about that, that you started ordering. Because their, yeah, the germination percentage was so poor. It was really poor germination. It yeah. was sad. Oh, too bad. I really like, you know, Fedco, and he likes uh, Johnny's. Yeah. And I like, well, Fedco, they'll, they'll print right on the package <coughs> the germination rate. You know, they're, they're right, right up front what it is. You know? yeah. yeah, Johnny's does that too. It's cool. Yeah. He used to do, was it Jung? I used to do Jung, yeah. Yeah. But, um, that was a long time, long time ago. Didn't they? Uh, what's that? Didn't they get sold to Monsanto? Yeah. Yeah, that's oh. when I, I quit, yeah, I quit, I quit, um, using Because my grandmother used to use them, and they had, they had really great seeds. Yeah. But, um, when they turned over to Monsanto, that's when I quit, but, yeah. and my grandmother used to really love their stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they had, I mean, when, when I used it, before um, they sold out, I was really pleased. It was good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we did that too. But Fedco is, I've been really happy with them. It is, you know, really. Um, yeah, and their their catalog is hilarious. It is. Yeah, they really, it's, they're creative, you know, it's, yeah. it's awesome. They have a lot of little informative, you know. Yeah, and they, and they tell you where the seeds come from. They give you histories. I mean, they really, yeah. it's a lot, lot of information, you know, in their catalog. Yeah, and they'll have little things that people, you know, have a lot of experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they'll write up a little sure. article or whatever. Yeah, I think it's, they're helpful. Well, that's all I have for this video. Bang around that bell icon if you want to be notified when new videos come out. Call us on the hotline if you have comments or questions and want to be featured in an upcoming video. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe. Check us out on the website, and we'll see you guys on the next one.